stand oh new york giants fans we're back giants training camp underway we're i think about a week away a little more than a week away uh from the new york giants first preseason game definitely have some things to talk about some storylines at camp obviously we're gonna hang out with the chat tonight but bad what's going on my man what up, brother? Happy weekend, everybody. Weekend is here. And, yeah, at this time next week, we'll be calling the first preseason game of the year. August 11th is their first. I think it's the 11th, the 18th, and the 26th, um, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely looking forward to that. Giants football is back. And um, the way the Yankees and Mets have played this year, Giants football game comes <laughs> soon enough. Thank so never God. thought I, never thought a million years – well, not maybe not a million years – I don't think it's been a while. It's been a while since, you know, the beginning of August. I'm like, I can't wait for Giants football over Yankee baseball. Normally, the Yankee season was finishing. The Giants season was already finished in the middle of October. Um, very different dynamic. Uh, very different energy and expectations going into this year for sure. Oh, definitely. I want to give a quick shout out to Mike, man. Thank you so much for being a member. He says, stand up. What's up, man? It's Ain't Bad Dog. I had a blast at training camp on Tuesday, and Joe Shane found a stud in the six-round corner. I love Trey Hawkins. Well, I'm glad, Mike, that you got to go to training camp. Glad that you had fun. Uh, we're going to talk about Trey Hawkins in a minute. Just want to say hello to everybody in the chat. What's going on there, Ryan? What's going on there, Ian? What's going on there, Alvaro? What's going on there, Luann? ECK Sports in the chat. Mike Moran in the chat. The Bears TV in the chat. Thank you to everybody for being here. Ian Ernest, thank you so much for being here. H1000, thank you for being here. Amazing guy. I probably said you twice. I don't know. But thank you to everybody for being here. Appreciate all the support you guys always show. But, yeah, I mean, Hawkins has been one of the standouts. I, I, bad dog, I can't believe I'm saying this because it's only been two weeks, and I haven't gone to any of the training camps. I'm just going based off of what people are saying. Some of the clips that people have shown, he's looked impressive. You still have shorts on, okay? We, we still haven't played a preseason game. But. Brian Dable showed last year that they highly prioritize performance in training camp. Yes, uh, they do. Big time. Uh, we saw that with David Sills. We saw that with Colin Johnson. Those two were going to be the starters before the year started. Colin Johnson, of course, got hurt. Um, so they definitely high, highly prioritize how you play in camp. And Trey Hawkins has been getting first-team reps now since, like, day three of camp because the, the way that the guy's playing, not only has he gotten first-team reps, there's been instances where they've moved the Dory to the slot. So, I think they're clearly impressed with this kid. I don't know if he's going to be a day one starter. We'll see. But he's going to have a role with this team. And, and I think the exciting thing about with Trey Hawkins is, is his upside. He's not one of these guys that's having this strong camp and you're like, all right, but he's kind of physically limited. No, this is a dude that's six foot two. This is a guy mm -hmm. that ran a 4'4". This is a guy that was kind of an unknown commodity, which is why he went in the sixth round to begin with, because he went to Old Dominion. But he has, from an athletic standpoint, he has a very high ceiling. And obviously the Giants believe in their coaching. We might have found a diamond in the rough. Yeah, man. I mean, you never know. I mean, he's 6'3", almost 200 pounds. So he's a good-sized corner. And this is where GMs make their money. You're not supposed to miss in the first round. You're not really supposed to miss in the second round. But those GMs that build championship teams find the value in those third through sixth rounds because you don't have to pay them any money. So yeah. you get them for you know you're getting them pretty cheap to right. begin with, and you can build around those guys. So yeah, when you get guys that are you know sixth round picks and they come in, they they can start at any point in the season. You get a sixth round pick that becomes an NFL star. I mean, you hit a home run because right. at that point, sixth round is you're hoping for a camp buddy. You're hoping maybe they make the squad as a special teams guy, and and maybe they give you some depth. But if you find a guy in the sixth round that becomes a starter. Well, you've not a good starter. I mean, we know Tay Crowder was Mr. Yeah, Relevant. we saw Corey Ballantyne. That didn't, you know, so right. but, a, but, good, a good starter, like you right. said. But Tay Crowder for, for a seventh-round pick, I mean, was yeah. pretty good. That was pretty good value. So, yeah, definitely um, definitely excited about you. You know me. I love the defense. So, listen, man, if, if that guy could ever become something, I mean, we talked about it before. We, we figured the secondary is probably the weakest area on the defense. We don't really like our, our inside linebackers either, but – we figured outside of Adoree Jackson and, and probably Deontay Banks and Xavier McKinney, everything's up for grabs. The slot corner's up for grabs. Um, yeah. Who would have thought the number two corner <laughs> for grabs now? So we'll see. Yeah, he's, I mean, definitely be getting encouraging reports. And you look at this corner group, man, between Hawkins, uh, obviously between our first round pick with Deontay Banks and between Cordell Flott, suddenly you've got three guys that are like 22 or younger. Yep. 
six foot or taller. They all ran a four four. Uh, a lot of potential there. You got to be Definitely. excited for long term prospects of this corner grouping. I still think we probably need another pick because I think we're going to lose a Dory next year, and the more the merrier, especially in a weak Martindale scheme. But you got to be encouraged with the upside and the youth uh, in that secondary. And I only expect Joe Shane to continue to try to improve that part of the defense. So. Uh, really encouraging things from the the corner group stuff for for sure. I would yeah, probably because we figured that was going to be a weak spot. So again, they're they're playing in shorts. Yeah, of course. You know, so you take it for what it's worth. But I'd rather hear good things about him than oh, the guy's getting toasted, the guy's getting killed. You know, the guy sucks. So yeah, it's much yeah, much be- and, and, there's a lot and, better energy coming out of the camp this year. Than- and we we got to talk about another draft pick. We got to talk about another draft pick in the third round, and and we're gonna get to him in a second. I'm just going to read a couple of these super chats, but we got to talk to it. We got we got to talk about another draft pick that the Giants took. Yeah, no, no question. Die Hurley no says, Cannoli Crew, I bought tickets for New York Giants for San Francisco. Oh, oh, so you're going to both road games on the West Coast? That's all. They play like four or five days apart. That's awesome. Uh, enjoy it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you very much. And Sports Bias says, what's up, Bad Dog and Chris? One week till the Giants. Yeah, Speaking of cannolis, and tomorrow's my cheat day when I went to the store today, I got some cannolis because I haven't had a cannoli in a long time. So that's we're having some tomorrow. Cannoli, <laughs> baby. There you go. There you go. And there it is. Jeremy just said it. I love Jalen Hyde. I honestly think he could be that wide receiver one we needed since OBJ. I ain't going to go that far yet in terms of comparing him to OBJ. They're in short still. All right. He still hasn't gotten tested in a game. But his speed's impressive. There's certain Dude. guys, bad dog, where you're like, you're like, yeah, they're fast. Like Darius Slayton, he's fast. Darius Slayton's fast, but he doesn't have eye popping speed. He's not explosive. Yeah, when you Jalen Hyatt is explosive. He's TNT. Yeah, I mean, he makes everybody look like they're in quicksand when you yeah, watch him. He, he got up to what twenty four miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean that is just blazing tracks. We haven't had that guy. I don't know if we've ever had a guy like that. There may have been guys that ran four two, you know, four three, whatever. John Ross, but it was for a year, right? Yeah, yeah. but that was was he was still running like a four, whatever. Probably not. Higher ran. Yeah. He's probably high. It's probably a four two, four low four three guy. But when Ross got here, he wasn't that fast. Yeah. yeah. Um. But God, he yeah, man, I, I'm excited about that because Daniel Jones has not had that type of receiver really extend the field like that to throw the ball deep down the field and you've seen it all training i mean Hyde just runs by these guys and his hands are amazing he's made a couple of amazing catches i there was, there was one where you know they, they're talking about Jalen hyatt's hands he caught it in the corner of the end zone i was impressed with the throw the, oh, throw, oh, was, yeah, yeah. the throw was perfect yeah for sure actually man. perfect the back, the back shoulder throw in the in the right, the uh, the back corner of the end zone. Yeah, and he also hit on two fifty yard touchdowns. Yeah, two long touchdowns. I uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, but yeah, his blazing speed, his route running looks better than advertised. Um, I don't know how you can't be excited if you're a Giants fan looking at some of these rookies. Like, and, and again, it's training camp, so I don't want to go overboard. We all, right. as fans, we always go overboard, whether it's you know uh, in a negative way or in a positive. Right, one way or the other, we go too far. Yeah, like last year, everybody was going way too far with Daniel Jones from a negative standpoint with the training camps. This year, it's been mostly positive. Like I'm trying to keep myself in check, but it's exciting. It's exciting to see the way that these guys are playing. It's exciting to hear about how Daniel Jones, you hear it from everybody, all the reporters, how Daniel Jones looks like he is. He looks like a different quarterback. I'm- all the reporters, but obviously the media. <laughs> you know, Le'Veon Bell says he's a bottom tier quarterback. Yeah. And then I, I tell, you know, I say I, I do a video on that. I tell people, I'm like, if he's a bottom tier quarterback, if you actually think that name 20 quarterbacks better, some guy named 20 he The guy he's putting Geno Smith in there, he put, um, the hell else he put in there? Ryan Tannehill. He put um I forgot who the hell it's I, stupidity. I mean, I, it's stupidity. Garrett Carr. I mean, just stop being an idiot. Just they stop, just, stop being, they're stat heads. They're stat heads. But I'm sorry, a bottom tier quarterback doesn't take last year's Giants team to the divisional round. That's that's all there is to it. And bottom tier quarterback doesn't rush for 700 yards and seven touchdowns. Everybody just seems to push that aside. When Jalen Hurts is running all over the place, or Lamar Jackson's running, all over, oh look at look at the look, look at the athleticism! Oh my God! When Daniel Jones is like, oh, he only threw fifteen times. It's just like stop, stop with the you know the the bull the bull pucky on uh, on Daniel Jones. It's, it's just it's unbelievable. Like to me, 
and this is really what the Le'Veon video, when I did the video on Le'Veon Bell, that's what it was about. To me, not so much Le'Veon Bell saying he was a bottom-tier quarterback. If you think that, okay. I, I don't think he's a bottom-tier quarterback. I don't think there's 20 quarterbacks better in the league than Daniel Jones. I'm not going to say he's an elite guy. But I swear to God, Chris, between Le'Veon Bell, Shady McCoy, these other guys, I feel like they're, they're, they're trying to drive a wedge between Barkley and Jones. Like to me, this is, it seems like they have an agenda to try to split the goal. Oh, Barkley should have got all this money. Daniel Jones, son, Daniel Jones got the contract. Barkley, blah, blah, blah. No. I swear to God, that's their thing. Um, and I, by the way, I did see Saquon Barkley. Huh. He was at uh, whatever this Dix is up in Latham, New York. Oh, you saw him like in person. I didn't get to like take a picture with him because you had to get the early and get bracelets. And then you had to yeah. hope that you got to see him. But I do have a quick video of him walking by me for like it's like nine seconds long. Where is it? With his cavalcade. So I'm la I laugh because there's a bunch of guys from Dicks here, and they're all like tiny. I'm like, what are they gonna freaking do? They ain't gonna stop you, but you you can see him real quick. Here he comes right here, and the guy gets in my way. But there he is. Oh yeah. And then the guy gets in my way. But Barkley's bigger than all those guys. Look at that. What the hell are they gonna do? Yeah, he's a monster, man. He, he is a a freaking. He's like my height. He's not tall, but he's. <laughs> I'm. So, I feel like a lot of people are just forgetting about Barkley, and and because we're all excited about the new pieces, we're all. He's excited a great about, camp too. He's made a couple of great catches. Yeah, he's made a couple of great catches, but we're all excited about Jones year two in the offense. We're excited about Waller, who's been incredible thus far in camp. We're excited. Oh about my Hyatt. god, he looks we're, amazing, man. Hyatt looks incredible. Best weapon since we've had since OBJ in terms of the passing game. Dude, um, I am pumped about Darren Waller. I, yeah. I, you can't guard him. <laughs> you can't but guard I'm that guy. I'm going to tell you what, though, Bad Dog. We're, we're all forgetting about Barkley because of all these new weapons. How much better is Barkley going to be now that you got all these new pieces to worry about if, if you're an opposing defense? It's crazy because you, you want to crowd the line of scrimmage. You're going to have a lot of speed. You're not going to be able to crowd the line of scrimmage with Darren Waller back there to begin with. But then you got a guy like Jan Hyatt and Paris Campbell who can just do their blazer. Like I said, Campbell's very fast. Hyatt's explosive. It's a totally different dynamic. You, everyone's talking about, oh, Daniel Jones, dinks and dunks and dinks and, you know, little Danny dump offs and whatever the hell they call them. It ain't going to be that way this year. I don't know why people can't wrap their head. Listen, I was as critical of Daniel Jones as anybody out there. But last year, he was a completely different quarterback. And I don't know how somebody can sit there and, and – and honestly assessed him and go, oh, he's digging a Duncan. His number one receiver was Richie James. What the hell? Richie James had made a lot of other teams. He was our best receiver, number one receiver until Hodgins got there. R R what Richie is James he is supposed to do? Richie James is so good, he got a million-dollar contract. Right. <laughs> and he was our number one guy for most of the year. Come Those on, man. What are we talking about here? Totally you know, our offensive line stinks. <laughs> And Toasty says, just a quick question. Which giant looks most out of place in another uniform? For me, it's Bavar. Well, Bavar played with the Eagles at the end of his career. Or both of them. Well, there you go on to say it. Or Steve Smith and Eagle Green. Or Tuck is a Raider. I, Bad Dog's got to see Bavaro. I didn't. I definitely, got to it's definitely Bavaro. Yeah. Um, Bavaro said one of the greatest things ever. He said, I have dreams about murdering Buddy Ryan. That's my man. <laughs> I love Bavaro. And then he ended up playing for the Eagles. And he actually got thrown out of a game. When Steve he Smith, bad dog. I, he didn't. We never even really got to see Steve Smith in an Eagles. He tore his knee up, and that was he kind of hurt, didn't really. You never really. So I'm not going to count him. Uh, yeah, it's probably Bavaro because even though I didn't grow up watching him, even when I see like pictures of him in Eagles uniforms, it's like he shouldn't be in that. He yeah, look, look really out of place. It's just him yeah. and that. Uh, Carl Banks in a Browns jersey, a little yeah. strange. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of giants that were with Parcells ended up being Patriots. Like Dave Meggett was a Patriot, David Patton was a Patriot. I mean, that wasn't really a big Carl Banks in a Browns uniform, though. That was strange. Yeah, because you know, he's a giant, and he's in the ring of honor. Um, when you think back to it, most of our guys we kept here. It, it's it's I mean, well, Tuck went to the Raiders. OC played here for pretty he ended up somewhere at the very end, didn't he? Or did he? I don't remember, did he? I don't think so. No, he, he we retired a giant, didn't he? Strayan, of course, start to finish. Eli Hockey started. Nix is a Colt. That was little. Yeah, yeah. Cruz is a bear. That was weird. I don't even remember him playing. He, didn't, he barely played. I don't even know if he did play. But, I don't even remember him. But I remember seeing him in the uniform in preseason. Big Moose yeah. says, am I correct 
that we could only protect two players a week on the practice squad or they can get claimed off of waivers. Big move, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to have to look into that one. I know that they made changes to that rule last year when they had uh, the uh, the extra game. They made alterations in terms of who you're able to put on the practice squad, who you're able to add to the roster, the adjustments you're able to make. I know they made the three quarterback rule this year, but I'm going to be I don't want to give you the wrong answer. I don't I'm not 100 percent sure on that on your, your specific question. Um, and Andrew Marchese, man, thank you for being a member. He says Daniel Jones will never, ever get fair treatment. And you know what? Screw him. That's why that's why I fall in love with him. Though. I understand I him not getting fair. I, I get it. It's New York. Eli didn't get fair treatment most of the time. I yeah, was OC, yeah, like, that's what I was gonna say, bad dog. But I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, she went to the Falcons. I remember I thought I remembered that. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I was just saying, like, Eli, I love when people are like, Oh, Eli's so overrated. Eli's overrated. I'm like, how the hell can a guy be overrated when all people do is talk shit about him? Like, all they do is insult him. He sucks. He's terrible. He's this. How is a guy overrated when everybody tells you he's terrible? <laughs> I don't get it. And I, listen, I don't understand the Daniel Jones thing, but it's New York. York. I, 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 I have a feeling you're going to shut a lot of people up this year. It's New York, bad dog. It's New York. That's that's a lot. But to do this with is you. the thing. Well, maybe for, I was going to say this is the thing. Like, these aren't the New York people. Giving Daniel Jones a hard time. It, it's like the national. You know, yeah, but the news. national news knows that by giving, g- taking shots at Jones whenever they get a chance, it's going to draw ratings. New York fans are passionate, right? It's a big market. Uh, Eli mm-hmm. had to do it in, in deal with it his entire career. Even after Eli won two Super Bowls, he had to deal with it. So yep. it comes with the territory. He's always that, he knows that when he takes the job. It's the most scrutinized position in the most scrutinized city. It, it is. is what it is, and hopefully, he just keeps getting better and keeps proving people wrong. Uh-huh. Ronald, and I think he will. Ronald, I agree with you. Ronald says Vanilla Vic is going for 4,500, 35 touchdowns, eight picks a month until my wife starts asking why I somehow spent $38 <laughs> watching a football game making comments. <laughs> What's up, Ronald, man? Thanks for popping the stream, man. And uh, yeah, listen, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, s- s- you know, his stats are going to be better this year. I'll leave it at that. I think he's going to have much better stats this year. Um, we'll see. We'll see what his final stats are going to be, but. He's gonna have better stats. You're not. He's not gonna have 15 passing touchdowns if he plays all year. I promise you that. Sports bias. What's going on, man? He says, "I don't care about the media hating the Giants to DJ. I'd rather be the underdog and win than the Cowboys, who are somehow always Super Bowl bound and lose." Yeah, it's true. They always they always fall short, bad dog. That's been their mo. They always fall short. It's enjoyable too. I gotta admit, it's. Yeah, I mean, you go. You know, you go back- they're the loudest. I, I swear. I mean. Eagle, fan, Eagle fans, I'll say this all the time. They're like we are. I, I really do. That's why Eagle fans, Giants fans bang heads. We're very passionate about our teams. We love our teams. We will defend our players and our team till we're blue in the face. Our players, the team screws up. We will rip them. We we don't we don't wave pom poms. They're, they're very it's it's very condensed into one area where the Cowboys are just kind of Blase, blase. They don't. They don't have the passion that the Eagles fan base. I'm not saying all Cowboys fans, but a lot of the Cowboys fan base. I'd say 50 percent of it just kind of watch them because of the Cowboys. Where 90 percent of Eagles and Giants fans are like really into the freaking game. Right. Um, yeah, f- f- screw the Cowboys. I want to kick their ass week one, man. Uh, I, I I still have a good feeling we're going to. And Be John, sure. what's going on, man? He says, what's up, Chris? Chris, you haven't done any Mets videos. I mean, I don't really do a lot of Mets videos. Or rants, at least Bad Dog is showing his face talking about the Yankees. Mets stink like the Giants. The Mets do stink. And I told you that last week, John. I'm thrilled the Mets did what they did. They completely sold off, which is what they should have done. So Get rid of the old Yankees players. Didn't. What did you say? The Yankees didn't, and that pissed me off. That was a mistake, I think. Well, I, mean, I said the Mets got it right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Obviously, it's been a horror show of a season as a Mets fan, but at least we sold when we were supposed to, so... I said this in a video, Chris, and it, it, somebody had a comment that was so perfect. I said in the video, I said, Steve Cohen did everything he could to try to win. He went, I said, he took a couple of gigantic swings and he missed. I go like the Yankee batters. And somebody commented, they go, the difference between Steve Cohen and the Yankees is Steve Cohen struck out swinging, the Yankees strike out looking. That That's is good. exactly, I'm like, what a great comment. That's a good comment. Fact. That's yeah. a good comment. That's a good comment. Abe, Abe, what's going on, man? Thank you for being a member. He says, what position would you like us to target after all the cuts? I mean, I, I think it's edge still. If I had to pick edge. Yeah, I think I would say edge or. 
maybe a linebacker, but Beavers has been getting decent write-ups. I, I think I'm leaning edge. I think we need depth off the edge if I had to pick a position right now. You can't have enough edge rushers, especially in wing system. Yeah, yeah I think that's what I'd want. And King Tracy says, I've watched y'all since junior or high school. Now I'm joining the 21 club. Well, there you go. Now you can drink legally. I hope by the time I'm 25, we'll get our fit super. Screw that. You get it. You're 21. I want it now. I, I was going to say, but it's every 22. <laughs> no, I want to get it right now, King Trizzy. <laughs> Much love. Appreciate you guys. What's going on, man? Thanks for popping in. And Dylan says, Tainted Bad Dog. Paris Campbell looks awesome, dude. I, I mean, we've both been uh, hyping up Paris Campbell. We've both been, been fans of Campbell since they made the acquisition. And, and yeah, we both I, wanted the Giants to draft him. Yeah, we did. Draft. Going back to 2019 or whatever year that was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I loved when we made that move. I didn't expect us to do it. It was kind of an under-the-radar move. But, um, yeah, really good fit in this offense. And if he stays on the field, I've said it. I expect Paris Campbell to lead all the receivers in, in yards this year uh, if he stays healthy and stays on the field this year. That's, that's I guess, my hot take. Um, many people on Twitter killed me for that when I said it right after they acquired him. But it seems hey, like a wide receiver. I, I think Waller could be there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Waller's the, the main – Target in the in the past game I'm overall. Still, I'm just I haven't been this excited about the offense in I don't know how long, man. It's been a long time since. I mean, again, I'm not sitting there saying we're going to put 30 a game, yeah. but we're going to put up 30 some games. We yeah. haven't done that a lot, and I just it's just different. I mean, you have the coaching staff. You know, your quarterback is coming of age. You got his contract. He's a, just a confident guy, and it just a little confidence goes a long way. And I just feel like Daniel Jones took that monumental leap last year. Stats didn't show it. But in between the years, that's where he needed the most. And I think this year you will see the stats improve. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to put up Pat Mahomes numbers or he's going to throw for 35 or 40 touchdowns. I'm not going to put a number on it. But this offense will have a lot more big plays than it did last oh, year. No it's doubt about it. completely different. You, no you're not going to be able to just plan for Barkley. Like Chris said, you're not going to be able to just stuff the box. It's yeah. going to be really different this year. Yeah, you think about the, the dynamic of Jones and Barkley as a running duo. Like, you know, opposing defense obviously got to worry about that. That that was by far our biggest threat last year on the offense. Now you're adding, like, weapons that could actually take the top off a of defense. Like, that's going to enhance everybody. It's going to enhance Jones's legs, Barkley's legs. Like, it just makes the offense that more uh, unpredictable. So, And it's uh, going to allow Waller to work the middle of the field, especially yeah. that RPO and that play-action pass. It's just – you, and you have guys that can, like, stretch the defense, which should open up the middle of the field for a guy like Waller or a guy like Wandale out of the slot when he gets healthy, whoever the slot receivers are. So, this is on pay – again, it's paper, and they're in shorts. So, I'm not going to say that the Giants going to be a top-10 offense, but on paper, this is the best – all-around offense we have had in a long time. I agree. I mean, look at the offensive line. That's not the whole there, always, but it's better. That's always the key. It's going to come down to the line. Like, we could have, we, had, we had an offense where we had Barkley and Odell on the same offense, but we weren't great because we couldn't block. Like, it, it's, it's going to come down at the end of the day. It's going to come down to how well we could hold up and block. And we'll talk about Evan Neal. There was a concussion today with him. We'll, mm -hmm. talk into, we'll get into that. I'm not too worried about it. They said he's a concussion protocol. Maybe he misses a week. Just rest up. But obviously, you still don't like that because he's going to miss some valuable training camp reps for a guy that, you know, you you, you know needs some needs some work. But I, I will say his reps thus far that I've seen, and again, I'm not there. I've seen some clips that people have posted. He looks better. Uh, he, his technique to me looks better. Uh, I'll say that. But we'll get a better taste of it come preseason uh, mm -hmm. if he plays in the first preseason game. Good chance he won't um, now, now that he's been in concussion protocol. We'll see. But obviously, he's a huge key. John Michael Smith's man, I was getting jacked up. Did you see some of the clips that's all over Twitter between John Michael Smith and Dexter Lawrence going at it head to head? Oh my God. And listen, Dexter Lawrence is so good. Like you don't he is. Like, like when we watch the games, you, you you obviously you realize it, realize that he stands out. He was great last year. He was an all pro. But when you see him go one on one in these practices, and I'll give John Michael Smith credit. He's a rookie. He's, He's on his own. He, he held his own, but my God, Dexter Lawrence, for a guy that's 340, for him to be able to move that way and just push John Michael Smith back like he's a sled, like, my God. What, but what, I, what I'll say is that I, people say it all the time, iron, iron sharpens iron. Nobody is going to make John Michael Smith better than having to go up against Dexter Lawrence for the next five, six years. That's yep. only going to make him better, you know, Fact. year over year. That is, that is definitely facts, and 
Yeah, man. We we loved that freaking pick. Well, I, well, both of us wanted him to draft Dexter Lawrence, but I couldn't get excited about it because, well, I wasn't happy about Daniel Jones. The first round, uh, I think I went one for three. I did not like the Daniel Jones pick. That's working out. I yeah. did like the Dexter Lawrence pick. I wanted them to get him, and I did want them to get the Andre Baker, and we know how that one turned out. Was not good. Yeah, well, we good. don't need to talk about that one. No. Uh, what is DeAndre Baker doing? Is he in the league still, or is he? I don't think he is. I know I know he had a cup of tea with the – I think it was the Chiefs, right? Yeah. The uh, Chiefs love our players. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. And uh, Mark Bud Light Holmes, what's going on? He says – It's a great name. Guy? Yeah, I was going to say that's Mark. I guess he likes Bud Light. He says, Eli and Phil were below average till they weren't. Yeah, you're not lying. Uh, Eli was a, thought to be below average till he won his first Super Bowl. That's just the truth. He was. Yeah. And Sims, oh, just, was, Sims dealt with a lot of injuries at the beginning of his career and, and had yeah. a – Coming out year in eighty four, but that was his fifth year in the league. So, yeah, people but, looked at, people looked at Eli who put up pretty good stats, but he had everything around him, and he was kind of a guy that a lot of Giants fans felt like w- was kind of holding the team back uh, until he won his first Super Bowl. Same thing with Phil Sims, like you said, injuries had a lot to do with it. Um, but I, I've said it several times: the upbringing. Obviously, I didn't get to see Sims, but the story of Sims and Jones is incredibly similar. Small school. You know, in that aspect, massive so, booing when they were drafted. Booing, a lot of turnover. Sims went seventh. Career. Jones went sixth. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Daniel Jones has a career like Phil Sims and wins two Super Bowls. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Abe says, uh, "Oh, I already read that. Oh no, I didn't. What position? Thank you for being a member. Says what position? Oh yes, I did. I said the edge. Toasty Banks also played one season for Washington. Are oh, you talking about in college? Yeah, I no, listen, maybe played for the Redskins." Oh, he's I don't remember Carl, Carl Banks I'm playing. Of there. Banks. I'm thinking of Deontay Banks. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, of course he played at Maryland. But I don't even remember there. Carl Banks playing for Washington. Oh. oh. Donovan says you'll never see a video of a defensive player on the Giants. Oh God, you saw you saw that obviously, right? Trayvon Diggs. The whole Dak Prescott thing. Yeah, because Dak is a bitch. <laughs> Trayvon's not, no no lies told. Yeah, I, and listen, I get it. Like, Cowboys fans coming at me on Twitter when I post about it. it, it I, yeah, I, I am taking a shot at you guys when I get an opportunity. I'm a fan at the end of the day. But the truth is, Giants ain't doing that. The Giants are not doing that to Daniel Jones. I'll tell you that right now. They got a lot more respect for their quarterback than that. Um, it was definitely, I guess, a little bit overblown. But it was funny, man. A little, little turmoil there in Dallas. I love to see it. Uh, Dallas, listen, they always take shots at our quarterback. Yeah. So screw them. Dak ain't good. And we we owe Dak we owe Dak one, uh, uh, more than one. We owe Dak. A yeah, three. we have to. Uh, I'm, uh, we just got to beat them. That we was, owe Dak that was a three this year, bad dog. I'll, I'll be happy with the first one. But we'll worry about the sweep when we get there. But let's let's win this. We got to beat Dallas. Yeah, got to beat Dallas. It's such a big game. Got to like, beat. Yeah, it's, we haven't beaten them in years. I'm so let's get the chat's take on this and your take as well. And obviously, like this year is more important than most years because we actually have expectations going into the year because we're coming off a playoff win, which is insane. That's our last playoff win since we won a Super Bowl, which is crazy. Ridiculous. Ten years. Insane. Um, Is this – can you remember off the top of your head a bigger opening day game than the game we have Sunday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys? I think it's probably a, maybe a game against the Dallas Cowboys back when we were really good in the mid to early. I was going to say maybe 2009 when they opened the stadium. Yeah. Or was that game two? That was this game is, two. That was game two that year. That wasn't even game one. We opened with Washington. That was when Brandon Jacobs ran over LaRon Landry. So that was game two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't. Uh, I really don't remember. Like, we haven't beaten Dallas forever. We, we talked about last year, the, the opening day win. The Giants had won once on opening day since 2009. Like, it doesn't happen. And, um, or no, that was – was that 2000? Maybe that was 2009 they opened it. I can't remember now. Maybe 2008 we opened it. It was a long time ago. Anyway, we talked about the uh, Tanner and Tomey and said they're down 13 on the halftime. Up, here we go, same old Giants. Things changed in that second half. They found a way to win. They went for two. You called it with about eight minutes ago in the game. You said if they score a touchdown like a minute to go, do they go for two? And that's exactly what they did. And That was kind of set the tone. That was against the Titans. They were in the AFC Championship. It was a big win for the Giants. Yeah. We haven't beaten Dallas in a long time, and we have not been good in this division against our division rivals in a long time, and we need the game. 
I don't want to say week one is the end all be all because it's not, but if we get the team off to a great start to get them comments, we can play with these guys. Yeah. We can beat these guys. And it would give us a divisional win right off the bat. Like you and I have talked about this. Don't expect them to win a Super Bowl. If they did, that'd be great. But we expect if we're going to talk about taking a step forward, they got to at least do what they did last year. But we have to get better in the division. We have to yeah. be able to beat yeah. Dallas. We have to at, le- at the very least be able to compete with Philadelphia. Maybe not beat them. At the very least, I'm not saying I don't want to be. Around, like, of course. But we have to at least compete because they wiped the floor with us last year. Yeah. That can't happen. So this yeah. game one is gigantic. It means more to us than it does Dallas. I can tell you that. I, I honestly, I think it's the biggest, the biggest opening day game I could remember in a long time. I'd have to look at their schedule and really think about it. But when you factor in that it's at home too, I think that adds more pressure for us. Because if we're going to split with Dallas, it's more than likely going to come week one. When they have a new play caller, like maybe, you know, I think it kind of is in our favor with the way that it was structured. So it's a big one. This is a big opening day game for the New York Giants. I'm not going to say if we lose the season's over, of course not, but it's a big, it's a big game. Yeah. It, it'll go a long way for the confidence of that locker room. Like I said, saying we can beat these guys. Yeah. Beat these guys. You can play with these guys. These guys aren't shit, you know? So Ian, man, thank you so much, man. He says, hey, fellas, most excited I've been for a season by far. Who are the five to six wide receivers making the team without Shep and Wanda? I think Shep is going to start. Do you think a guy like Hodges is being slept on a bit with all the new weapons? I, yeah, I haven't heard. I've seen. I've started to see a couple of clips of Hodges recently. I don't think fans forgot about him, though. I don't think they're sleeping on him. You just haven't seen a lot of clips of him because they're highlighting, obviously, the new guys with Campbell, Hyatt, Waller. Um but I don't think the Giants forgot about Hodgins. Him and Jones obviously had great chemistry last year. I still think he's obviously going to be involved in this offense. But, I mean, Shep is a decent in camp from the clips that I've seen. Obviously, I'm not there. I think he's going to make the team. And Jeff Smith today, I think, got put on he did list, whatever it was. So, he's yeah. probably not making they the kept, team. They now. kept Jeter, the nose tackle, instead. So Yeah, so, I think... I mean, the obvious top three that we've said that we think will be the starters, although Hyatt may be pushing somebody out soon. Um, yeah, right. Slayton, Slayton, Campbell, and Hodgins, then Hyatt. Shep, I'm going to put in there. I think he's I think he's probably going to make the team. And then the, the, after that, I'm not sure. Is it Beasley? Beasley's look pretty good. Um, Colin Johnson's a really good Colin again. Johnson, it, you know, so I'm not sure after that, but I'm pretty confident. I think Shep's making this team bad, though, to start the year. Yeah, I, I think so. I, yeah. I think Shep will be there. Yeah, I think Shep will make the team. I, I think that those five, and then you got a couple of guys battling for if they go with seven for two spots, if they go for six with one spot. So um, I, didn't, I didn't mention Crowder, too, who obviously could bring value, in, you know, as a punt returner. So you got to factor him in, too. Ronald, what's going on, man? He says, Madden, DJ is a 75. I could care less. Six to QBR. Dak is an 87 and led the league in picks, playing 12 games. Not that Madden is an indicator, but that's public opinion. How about player opinion? The top 100 list, bad dog, in the NFL that the players vote on. Andrew Thomas, who plays the second most important position in the National Football League, the blindside protector, who was an all-pro last year, second-team all-pro, but an all-pro nevertheless, did not make the top 100 players in the NFL. No. Are you kidding me? And and they had an honorable mention for the 10 that just missed it. He wasn't on that. (laughs) What are we talking about? Popularity contest, man. It's a popularity contest. It's just yeah. like the Pro Bowl. Like, it was like, oh, he's a Pro Bowler. Who gives a shit? Like, you can be a Pro Bowler. Like, there could be four guys ahead of you, and they all bow out, and you make it. Oh, he made the Pro Bowl. All Pro is where it's at. You make the All Pro team, you're doing something. He made the All yeah. Pro team. So who cares about, you know, Madden ratings or irrelevant with the player? Who I mean, which players do they ask? They don't ask every player in the NFL. Yeah, I don't I think they would. Maybe they do. I don't know, but. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. I remember one year, Chris Carson Wentz had a better year than Dak Prescott, and Carson Wentz didn't make the list. And I remember doing a video on him. I'm like, how's Wentz not on there? And Dak Prescott is. Dak Prescott was like 60. They're like, Wentz had a way better year. Why the hell ain't Wentz on there? Yeah, it's just wild. I don't really, I don't care at the end of the day. But you, you yeah. like to see your players get recognition when you feel like they deserve it. I'll and tell you what, Ronald. Next year he'll be higher than that. Daniel Jones. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He'll, he'll be higher than Dak. On Madden next year. There's my hot take. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I certainly don't hate it. 
Ryan, Je- but the thing is, the guys that make the ratings on Madden are Cowboys fans, right? Ah, uh, right. well, screw that then. <laughs> Ryan, thank you very much, man. Deepest wide receiver course since Nick's Cruz Manningham. Obviously not the best because we don't have Beckham, right? Um, but in terms of deepest, I'd have to think about it. Um, it is a pretty deep receiving core. I will say that. And what I think that I, what I think about this offense is I don't think there's going to be defined starters bad dog really all year. I think the Giants are going to play it game by game. And certain games, they're going to prioritize certain receivers getting more reps than others. And that's kind of, as weird as it may sound, the benefit in a way to having a receiver core where there's no alpha, where there's depth, and there's a bunch of pretty good wide receivers. You could find, kind of pick and choose based off your opponent who you want to to get the majority of the reps that game. If you're playing a team where you feel like speed could take advantage on the outside, Hyatt gets more reps. If you play a, you know, a game where you feel like maybe you could take advantage of things more so underneath, a guy like Sterling Shepard may get more reps. So that's, you know, in a weird way, that's kind of the benefit of having depth and not necessarily an alpha, if that makes sense. No, it makes absolute sense. And we saw that last year. Did they, they just kind of, you know, there was games that Kenny Galladay didn't play for whatever reason. I mean, he was supposedly our best receiver on paper. He didn't see the field and it yeah. wasn't because of injury. It's because he, you know, he wasn't good. He's like, why didn't I play it? Well, because you suck buddy. And <laughs> Richie James has been more productive than you. So yeah, he got beat up by Richie James and that's how yeah. bad it was. It's a completely different wide receiver court this year. Hodgins was a very good, uh, an awesome surprise. He's still there. And then, yeah, you're going to get Shepard back. He's really good in the locker room. He's a good character guy. He's, he's good for these young receivers. He's, he's been through it all. Yeah. He got Wandale, who looked like he was going to be something before he tore his ACL, unfortunately. He had 100 yards and three uh, quarters. Um, and then, yeah, you got the absolute just that explosive speed and high. You got a really good speed in Paris Campbell who's coming off a career year. And then, of course, you got Darren Waller, who's the best tight end we've had probably since Shockey as far mm-hmm. as offensively goes. I don't remember a tight end being as good as him offensively. Yeah, so. I, he might be better than Chucky. Like, uh, in yeah. Terms of, in terms of strictly I'm, talent. Right. I'm just saying, like, oh, an actual threat to throw to the tight yeah. end. Yeah. We haven't had it in a long time. I'm not, I'm not going back. Larry Donnell was not that guy. No. Uh, he did well, have three touchdowns. Well, what's his name was good? Uh, Bennett, right? With Martell. Martell was Bennett was good in one year, yes. He was good. I mean, he's not as good as, as, as the guy we got now, but he was good. Um, Mark, thank you for being a member, man, for 28 months. I appreciate it, man. He says, can the Giants score 30-plus points a game this year? You mean average? No. Last year, there wasn't a team in the NFL that averaged 30 points a game. I think the, We're the, going to score 30 more oh, than we'll have a game. We'll definitely time. have some games where we put up 30. Yep. Um, last year, I think we averaged, I want to say, 21. or I think it was 21. And we were, I think we were 15th in scoring. Now, scoring around the league last year, it was kind of a – the NFL goes in trends. And last year, the trend was – Defenses are getting smaller because they're adding speed because they have to account for all the speed on the offense. Mm-hmm. Let's pound it down their throat. You saw run frequency in the NFL go way up. By a result, you saw longer time of possession for teams like the Giants, longer drives, but lower scoring because teams controlled the pace more. So last year, the trend was down, and the Giants only averaged 21 points a game, but yet they were 15th in the league in scoring. Um, so the league goes through ebbs and flows in terms of what teams do and how they try to take advantage of other teams around the league. But, no, I don't think we're going to average 30. But I think we are we could definitely average 24, 25. I think we're going to have a better offense yeah. this year, I'll tell you that. Yeah, there will definitely be some games where we put put up 30. Yeah. That's going sure. to happen. For sure. I would love it to be week one against Dallas. Oh, that's a good defense, though, so I'm not going to sit here and say that's going to happen. That'd be fun. That'd be great. John says, Bad Dog and Chris, I believe the NFC East will dominate the NFC. But this year, the Cowboys and their fake fan base will be the odd team out. <laughs> fly, Eagles, fly. You're right. I mean, listen, I still got to respect the Cowboys. They still got a good team. They still got a really good pass rush. They got weapons. So I'm not going to just, you know, cast them aside. But I think we're beating them opening week. And I think we could compete with the Dallas Cowboys. I'll tell you that. We close, we close the gap on them a lot. Yeah. But a lot's going to come down to Evan Neal that first week, man. We keep saying it. It's the truth. We know yeah, Evan Thomas is, is going to bring it. Got yeah. to see Evan Neal hold his own. Let, last year, Tank Lawrence abused him. Yeah, he did. Like, he uh, killed him when we played Dallas. Can't happen this year. Otherwise, we're dead. That can't happen again. Nope. So, he's the X factor. So, we'll see We'll see how, We'll see see how. if he's up for the task. Uh, week number one against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And Big Moo says, had to sign off for a bit. But am I correct that we can only protect – oh, yeah, you asked me earlier, Big Moo, uh, with the member chat, uh, a week 
So they uh, they get grabbed by other teams. I, I that's something I'm gonna have to look on my own time. I'm not a hundred. Let me I'll, let me look real quick. How many players can you protect a week? I don't know. Uh, protect a week. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. Um, let's see. Teams can designate four players every week that are protected from being signed by other teams. It says four. I don't know if that's in season though. Um. I don't know if that's in season. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. I wish I had the answer off the top of my head, Big Moo, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure. But thanks, man. I appreciate it. Let me see if somebody in the chat knows. Let me go to, let me go to the chat. Maybe somebody posted it. Shockey was my chat. I love Shockey growing up. I had his jersey as soon as we drafted the guy. Um, I'll have to look that up in my own time, Big Moo. I'm not sure. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I got to catch up with the chat. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where? There we go. And David L., thank you, man, for being a member. He said, oh, now I can pull up member chats on. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, yesterday when I was – not yesterday, not yesterday before when I was doing the Yankee game. Yeah. I said, oh, shit, they show up on the – I didn't know that. The now. Yep, yeah. I noticed the other day. I'm like, oh, damn, good. Yeah, so now I can't uh, – all right, now I don't have to look at the YouTube chat. I could, ju I could just all do it here. Good. All right, thank God. I was so mad when you, you weren't able to do that before. David L. says, how did Neil get concussed? I didn't – I wasn't there. I didn't see it. Um, I obviously got – on a play, he got, he, he got concussed during practice today, but I didn't get an opportunity to see when it actually happened. I didn't see the clip. Um, but uh, reportedly, he walked off on his own power. He, he didn't have to be carted off. And it's concussion protocol. So as of now – it's not officially a concussion. It's they're looking to see if it is a concussion and how severe it may be. So at least that's the last I heard. I'm sure we'll get an update probably tomorrow. Um, at the I think tomorrow's the final training camp. At least the final training camp practice open to the public. Cruz on what's going on, man. He says I think DJ has more skills than 98 percent of quarterbacks in the league. Arm talent, 22 miles per hour in a game, so you know he has speed and he's accurate when given time. I. Here's what I'll say, man. I think outside of the elite, elite guys. guys, he has as much talent as anybody. You know, I'm, I, I, he's not Mahomes. He doesn't have that. But, he's not Bro. He's not Herbert. Yeah. He's not but Trevor he, Lawrence. But he, he – I know people are like, Herbert hasn't won anything, but Herbert's young and Herbert no, has Herbert's great, got great talent. Yeah. Herbert's got incredible talent. But Jones – listen, when I look at Jones, if I'm just talking about from a physical skill standpoint – Obviously, he's he's a plus as a runner. Obviously, guy ran for would have ran for probably 800 yards last year if he played the last game of the regular season. Um, I think his arm strength is a plus. I don't even think it's like average. I think it's a plus. I think it's, I'm not saying it's an elite plus, but I think it's a plus. I think his accuracy is a plus. Um, yeah, I, I think he does everything at least average or above average. I'm not going to say he's necessarily elite in anything, but I think he's in a definitely an above average quarterback and. Yeah, I yeah, I definitely think. He, let's put it this way, bad dog. He definitely has the physical tools to be a top ten quarterback in the NFL. I've always, I've, like, I've never wavered. Him. I've definitely wavered on my opinion about him. I've never wavered from that though. I've always said he has great physical talent. I just, yeah. I worried about the mental talent. You know, the mental, the, the things that you do in the pocket, the decision making, like that type of stuff. I, I was concerned, and again, that that had a lot to do with coaching. Yeah, which I lost yeah. sight of because I was just so sick and tired of losing. Um, but Joe Judge really messed him up, and John Mara admitted that. So I'm glad that he's gone. Dable's in there, and people can sit there and talk about Daniel Jones throwing 15 touchdowns all they want. That was by design, and this year he'll throw for more than 15. I won't put a number on it, but he will throw for more than 15. Oh, there's no, there's no doubt about it. I think he'll uh, throw for more touchdowns than he had combined touchdowns last year. I'll say I agree that. with that. I agree with that. I think I'm setting the floor. If he plays 17 games, my floor this year for Daniel Jones in terms of my expectations for combined touchdowns, rushing and passing, is 30. That's my floor in terms of my expectation going into the year. Whether that's 23 passing, seven rushing, 25 passing, five. I think he's going to hit that mark. Um, the red zone offense should be even better. Adding a guy like Darren Waller, yeah, because red zone offense was the best we'd seen it in a long time. It was a top 10 red zone offense and the problem was getting to the red zone when we got there we actually cashed in um 
this year with the Darren Waller. I mean, we all know the tight end's a massive threat down there. Yeah. Especially when you, you know, run the, the Daniel Bellinger could be a massive threat. We talked about that last week. You have those play action passes from the two because everybody's going to be guarding against Saquon. You have to worry about Daniel Jones running. You know, they're going to want to jump, and that's when Daniel Bellinger's all alone in the back of the end zone or Andrew Thomas. You never yeah. know. <laughs> Sean Smith says one of the wide receivers is going to have to play special teams out of the ones who make the final 53. Who is it going to be? Yeah, I, mean, I, thought, I thought it was going to be uh, the guy we yeah. just cut. He got hurt. So I thought it was going to be him that made the team. Uh, I think it'd be Crowder, honestly. Yeah, if one of them makes it, Crowder's a guy that returns punts. Um, you're not going to put Hyatt in that role. You're not going to put Shepard in that role. You're not going to put Campbell in that role. Uh, Slayton, you're not going to put in that role. Hodgett, yeah, so the back end, that's why – at Beasley, Crowder, Johnson. I think those guys are the guys that are competing for those last spots. And that might be why Crowder has an edge to make this team because of that. Uh, because he has the ability to return punts, special teams ability. Um, yeah, I think there's a good chance he makes the team. Do I mean, I'm not there. But if I had to guess, I agree with you. I think one of those back-end guys is going to be a gonna be, you're going to have to be able to contribute on special teams if they're carrying seven wide receivers. Maybe they only carry six. But Jason says... Let's not sleep on Shockey. Him and Jacobs are my top two favorite Giants ever. Shockey would eat in this offense. Injuries and attitude. Dera Shockey was incredible. In yeah, that's why I said I, I think Waller is the best offensive tight end we've had since Shockey. Yeah. Like Shockey's care, like you said, his attitude, his character, that that hurt him. Uh, no question about that. He's very arrogant and um, had a lot, did a, had a lot of stupid penalties. He was a selfish guy. Selfish. Yeah. Um, he was cool at training camp. He was a very cool guy at training camp. But he he was, yeah, injuries and his attitude sucked. We won the Super Bowl without him. But there's no question when he was here, he was a, a gigantic threat, especially before Plexico got here. That's all our quarterbacks had to throw to. You know, that's all yeah, I carry. Him, him and Tiki. Him and Tiki. Tiki, and right. And I was talking about in the passing game. Tumor. Tumor was good. Tumor was good. Was yeah. But, yeah, no, he was definitely our featured weapon. Speaking of Tiki, uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, it should be. Andre's there. I couldn't comment on his Instagram. It said, you know, comments are limited. So I couldn't comment. I was going to say, yeah, you belong there too. How know. ironic would it be if, because Coughlin didn't get elected. What if in, say, three years, Coughlin, Eli, and Tiki all going in the same year? What would that Hall of Fame speech be like for Tiki after what he said about them? <laughs> that would be pretty funny. That would be pretty funny. Yeah, that would be cool to see all three of those guys going at the same time, though. I think Eli and, and Coughlin are going in at the same time. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? That'd be perfect. Yeah. The M says Shockey was a D bag and a and a and a dig me and did nothing uh, post Giants. But yeah, he was with he won. He went to the Saints and he he sucked. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl with the Saints, but he wasn't he wasn't like a difference maker when he got right. there. He actually technically won two Super Bowls, one with the Giants and one with the Saints. But he, did, I don't think he well did, I don't remember if he played in the Saints Super Bowl. He obviously didn't play in the Giants. He really contributed though. I don't know. Yeah. Demir Williams says, my favorite creators. What's up, Demir? He says, hope all is well. Hawaii is overrated. How do co how comfortable do you feel with our DBs now that we're seeing flashes of Hawkins? More comfortable, but it's practice. Um, and I don't know how Hawaii could be overrated. I've been there. It's beautiful. But hopefully it gets better for you. It can't be overrated in the middle of January. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know, man. From from like the end of November through like the middle of April, I can't, it can't be overrated. I still think our corners. I mean, bad look. Let's look at this schedule real quick when we talk about our corners. And I'm excited about our corners, especially long term, because these guys have, these guys have a lot of potential. But you look at the Giants' schedule. Let me go team by team. Week one. Let's go over the wide receivers on these teams. Week one: Dallas Cowboys, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup. Good receivers. Yeah, uh, Arizona, I'm not going to concern myself with because they don't have Kyler Murray. San Francisco, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, if you want to count him as a receiving option. Weapons all over. It's tough. Uh, Seattle, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, pretty good. Miami, uh, uh, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. Hill's hurt, though. I don't know what Hill's deal is, but yeah, he's got a knee issue, and I don't know... How serious it's oh. not, but yeah, if they're both healthy, yeah, that's that's, that's tough. That's probably the best core in the league. Um, Buffalo, Stephon Diggs, Washington. We know what they got. Terry McLaurin, uh, the dude from Penn State. What's his name? That was a Dotson. rookie last year. Who's good? Um, why is the name escaping me? Dotson. Dotson. Jahan Dotson. Um, so they got weapons. 
Uh, then you got the Jets. They had the really good. Uh, Garrett Wilson, he's really good. And obviously, Rodgers throwing the ball. Raiders, they got Devontae uh, Adams. Uh, Dallas back again. Washington back again. New England, not so much. But, like, you look at some of these receivers. We're going yeah, Philly the- twice. We know what they do. Philly twice. Cooper Cup with the Rams. So, like, we're going up against the, the creme de la creme in terms of the wide receivers this year. So our corners are going to be put to the test. There's yeah, no doubt are. about it. It's, it's trial by fire this year for this young cornerback. Yeah. But I'm excited. I'm definitely excited, and that's the only way they're going to learn, and they're going to get better. Don, man, thank you very much, man. Does, uh, does Andrew Thomas make the top 100? Uh, no, he doesn't. I'm going to tell you why, Don. I'm going to go over the players that have not made the list. I was I actually tried to figure it out yesterday when I was on Twitter uh, when I saw that he wasn't between 11 and 20. Josh Allen hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be in the top 10. Pat Mahomes hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be in the top 10. Joe Burrow hasn't been picked yet. Jalen Hurts hasn't been picked yet. So that's four of the 10 spots right there. Tyree Kill hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be there. Justin Jefferson hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be there. That's six. Micah Parsons hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be there. That's seven. Nick Bosa hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be there. That's eight. Chris Jones hasn't been picked yet. He's going to be there. And Travis Kelsey hasn't been picked yet. So there's your 10. So Andrew Thomas is not going to make the top 10, and he's not going to make the top 100 list as he continues to get disrespected by the NFL. Right. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Charlie says, little trivia question. What teams did Kayvon get his four sacks against last season? Also, you think he gets more this year? He got one against the Ravens with the strip sack to close out the game. He got the one against Washington for the touchdown. Yeah, one against the Colts when he, he did the Snow Angel. Snow Angel. Um, maybe he had two against the same. Did he have two against Washington that Sunday night game? He was a m- monster in that game. Did he have two against them that game? He's a monster against Dallas too. I don't know if he got Dak in that Thanksgiving Day game or not because he was. <sighs> it was that. De- I mean, it was definitely Washington, Baltimore, Indianapolis. That Thanksgiving Day game, he was a man possessed. I, I would say that one. I know yeah. he was everywhere. And Dallas's offense really wasn't good in that game. It's just we had nobody to play. Our offense was awful. Okay. Uh, I think he got a sack. He had to have gotten a sack in that game. Maybe not, but he was amazing in that Thanksgiving Day game. That I know. I'm going to look at his uh, – I'm curious now. Now I got to look. Let's, I know let's he was look. held about 40 times last year. <laughs> yeah, he was. I thought he, he had four and a half, I think, right? I think he had four. Don't, don't, don't jip him of that extra half. Oh, no, he only had four. I thought he had four and a half. Let me look at his game log. I know we definitely hit on three of them. Um, first game of the oh no, uh, Colts. Colts. Maybe it was it. twice against why. You know what? Yeah, it was twice, twice against twice. Washington because the first time he, I remember, because he sacked it. He sacked uh, what's his face Heineke. I think it was Heineke. Might have been. I, I forget. Might not have been Heineke. They were two separate might, games though. Might have once, right? But they said, "Oh, why come we didn't strip this? You know, you didn't strip it. Oh, you go to strip sack fumble, and then he right. did it. That's right." So it's twice against Washington, Indianapolis, and I'm looking at um, that Washington game, bad dog. <laughs> For the year, Kayvon Thibodeau had 49 tackles, 33 solo, and he had nine uh four stuffs for the year in terms of I guess like stuffing the run. In the Washington game alone, he had 12 of his 49 total tackles. He had nine of his solo 33. He had one of his four sacks, and he had three of his four stuffs. In that Washington game, he literally won that game by himself. That was he insane. Did. That was insane. Um, but yeah, it's insane. He, he's the reason we made the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that game. He, yeah, you're right. If we don't win that game, we don't make the playoffs. Yep. Chris says, just curious how you guys think you closed the gap so much with the Cowboys. I'll give you DT. Other than that, don't see it. You guys improved a little. Well, I, Chris B., I just think the fact that Daniel Jones is coming back year two in the same offense is a major improvement. Like, I, I made a video on it talking about Daniel Jones. You look at Jared Goff. Jared Goff had 1,200 yards last year, second year in his offense. You look at what Jalen Hurts did year two in his offense. You look at what Aaron Rodgers did year two in the LaFleur offense. He went from 26 touchdowns to 48. You look at what uh, D- Deshaun Watson did year two in his offense from 2019 to 2020 with uh, Kelly. Uh, he jumped like 10 touchdowns and 1,200 yards. So I think just Daniel Jones coming back in the same offense. And the players around him coming back in the same offense is is a huge improvement for this team. Uh, Darren Waller is a gigantic improvement. Yeah. Darren Waller is a major, major improvement for yeah. the Giants. Paris Campbell. As is Paris Campbell and Jalen Hyatt. Yeah. Major improvements. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying we've closed the gap yet. I still think Dallas is better. 
if I have to say, you know, pick. But I think we're definitely good enough to split with Dallas this year. And I think we're trending towards catching Dallas. Uh, because I think Dak's trending down. I think Dallas is going to be drafting a quarterback within the next two or three years. I really do. I think I think Dak stays are numbered as the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Well, they can't do much the way that contract is struck. He, no, he'll be the starter for the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think they're coming up on a on a, on a rookie probably within two or three years. Faze says honorable mention to Ike Hilliard. Ike Hilliard was good, solid. I don't think he ever lived up to that pick personally. He was like what seventh overall. You yeah, should stop drafting Florida receivers. Yeah, <laughs> but he was solid. He was solid. Um, he was doing good. Uh, Brian Dawkins hit him with a cheap shot. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but Tiki was obviously the better player from that draft. Uh, we got him in the second. Oh round. God, yes. Hilliard in the first. Bob, he says, did you see Rondé Barber say? Oh, thank you so much, Bob. He says, did you see Rondé Barber say that Tiki told him that Coughlin wore him down and forced him into early retirement, even though. He had his best years under Coughlin and solved his fumbling problems. Shut! Oh wow, I didn't see that he. So he said that on national TV, Bob? Or no, he said that to Rondé. He told Rondé that. Right, but did Rondé say that? Did Rondé oh. say that? Oh, I see. I mean, a lot of people have said that, and yeah, we did use Tiki a lot, but he had his best years with Tom Coughlin before Tom Coughlin got there. Tiki Barber was starting to spiral out of control. The dude had like a. Didn't he have a game where he had like three fumbles in the same game or something like that? It was against Philadelphia, and the funny thing is he ran for over 200 yards in that game. Yeah. Yeah. But think about how crazy this is. Saquon Barkley has two lost fumbles his entire career. Tiki Barber had three lost fumbles in one game. Yeah. Yeah, That's Tiki insane. fumbled a lot more. Calvin got there and said, hold the ball higher. Yeah. That was yeah. the difference. But, yeah, Tiki Barber doesn't sniff Hall of Fame consideration without Tom And I, I mean, I don't know when he said that. I mean, he might have said that the year after he retired, which yeah. was 16 years ago. Obviously, I mean, there were sour grapes. Yeah. Tiki was not happy when he left. Yeah. I don't care what Tiki Barber said about the judge. It does not take away from what the man did on the field. Oh, it was incredible. He was incredible. You know? So, I mean, you can look at some of the guys in the Hall of Fame. Their characters are a huge question about their character on and off the field. Yeah. Tiki may have said some things about the Giants because he wasn't happy, but Tiki's never – Gotten in trouble. I mean, Tiki's who, never. Who are we kidding, bad dog? Our, our our greatest player of all time has his character concerns are off the charts. Yeah, I'll T. Yeah, so wasn't a saint. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Speaking of which, thank you, New Orleans, for drafting George Rogers in '81 first. But yeah, he wasn't a saint. But he uh, could play football, and that, but he was the greatest cool. player in the history of defense in the NFL. Yeah, and Zach so, says we're going to shock the league. Love your guys' thoughts. We appreciate that, Zach. Yes, we do. Ronald says Geno Smith is in the top 100. It's because it's based off stats. He had a good statistical year last year. That's why. That's why he's in the top 100. Yeah. If we're being honest, um, and I'm, I'm gonna keep saying it. And maybe he'll have a really good year. And I'm not saying he can't have a really good year because he's young. Justin Fields continues to be the most overrated player in the NFL. Oh, that was another guy that when I said name 20 quarterbacks better, he said Justin Fields. I don't get it. And and everybody. I have Justin Fields better than Daniel Jones. Justin Fields sucks. He's won like three games his entire career. Five. Give him credit. Five. Five. Oh, sorry. Five. <laughs> but I don't I mean, get it. It's I don't, terrible. I don't, get, I don't get the Justin Fields hype. I don't get it. He runs fast. He does run fast. Congratulations. You're five and 20. You got two games all of last year where you threw for over 200 yards, and people are talking like this guy's a top 10 quarterback. Yep. Man, look, tell me one time in the history of the NFL – a quarterback has been labeled a top 10 quarterback in the league going into the next year when his team had the first pick. What yeah. Has that ever happened when the quarterback has played the whole year of the year before? He didn't get probably, hurt. probably not. A it's lot. never happened. Probably never. never. So I, I don't get it because the guy run, I, maybe he'll end up being really good, but pump the brakes. Yeah. I mean, and, um, and Michael, thank you very much. He says, joining late. How do you feel about our uh, – I love our wide receiver depth. Uh, I think it's probably the deepest part. I think it's pro probably the deepest part of the, the team. Uh, and, you know, obviously we need more talent at the top long term, uh, and we'll see how high it develops this year. Um, I think we need a high-end number one for sure long term, and I think they'll probably try to get that next year. There was only so many holes they could fill this year. But in terms of the depth, I don't think there's a deeper part of this team than our wide receiving core. I think there's legitimately probably eight guys in camp right now at the wide receiver position that are going to play this year in the NFL for somebody. 
Like we have a we have a lot of competition at the back end in this wide receiving core. So it's definitely a deep. It's probably like I said, that or maybe the interior defensive line are the two deepest areas of this team right now. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at Fields' stats, but maybe it's because he ran for 1,100 yards last year. So this is why they're all on his. You know, he finished tenth in MVP voting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> he finished tenth in MVP voting. I just look at the stats. I'm like, that can't be right. Tenth, tenth in MVP oh, voting on a What's team that won't be game. It is what it is. It, I don't care, but it is what it is. Um, Christie says, sometimes I wonder if we're better without a number one. Why make it? I, I do not wonder that. I think we would be better with a number one, a, a legitimate number one. But like I said earlier, there's some advantages to it It, when you have a good depth, when you have a good core of six or seven guys, because you can pick and choose the type of wide receiver that you want to run out there week to week based off of the the weaknesses of your opponent. But no, I I think it's always uh, more of a benefit if you have a Jamar Chase, if you have a Justin Jefferson, if you have a Devontae Adams, a Tyree Kill, uh, those guys, you know, change change defenses, change defensive game plans. Jason, thank you very much, man. Do we really need a number one wide receiver? We are diverse. Well, Waller's our number one. He just doesn't play wide receiver. He's our number one. Um, but yeah, I think the way that you look at this bad though going into the year, we may not have like a and we and don't get it twisted. We don't have what the Eagles have in terms of weaponry. We don't have what no, the God. Have. we don't have what um, you know, you know, that's well, you know, there, there's definitely some teams that clearly have better weapons than we do. But I, 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 I'm again, I, I'm gonna cut you off. So I'm looking at Justin Fields' stats. He had two games where he threw for over 200 yards. He had two games. He played 15 games, Chris. He had 16 fumbles. <laughs> he had 16 fumbles. And we still got to hear about the Danny fumbles. Now. I mean, are you kidding me? He had four <laughs> fumbles in, in a win <laughs> against New mean? England. He, he, he fumbled... 16 times. And he was 10th in MVP voting. And, and he was 10th in and, MVP and, voting. And, and his team finished with the number one pick. He threw for 2,200 yards. What? I, I don't care. He's. I, I don't either, but no. And listen, I, I, and listen. Oh, you want to talk about overrated? I mean, holy Jesus. He might end up being great this year. He's young. They got more weapons around him. But for people that are to already label this guy great is ridiculous. Ridiculous. He, athletically, he is. That yeah. doesn't make you a great quarterback all the time. And Michi says, I might be delusional, Giants fans, but I think we have the potential to be the second best team in our – I don't think you're delusional. I think there, we, they, could, that could happen. I don't think that's crazy to think that could happen in our division if DJ and our defense takes a big leap. Listen, Bad Dog, what's the most important thing uh, on a football team? Head coach and a quarterback, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if Daniel Jones takes a leap, is it crazy to think he could be better than Dak this year? I think he was better than Dak last year. Dak led the league in interceptions. Uh, is it crazy to think he'd be better than Dak this year? Because we know he's better than Washington. I mean, Daniel you know, Jones had a higher quarterback rating and a higher QBR than Dak Prescott, which would tell you that he was better. He I don't think it's crazy to think that's possible. I don't and either. Is it, and is it crazy to think that Brian Dable is a is the best head coach, if not the best head coach, certainly a better head coach than McCarthy and Rivera? Definitely. So why is it crazy to think we could have the second best team in the division? I, I, I think you know, Dable's I, a better. I think Dable's a better head coach than Sirianni. Yeah. Oh, God. if we ever beat the Eagles, I can't wait. I mean, Siri, I, I mean, I could have coached the Eagles at the Super Bowl last year with that talent. Yeah. I, Plus, Dable I, don't eat Pizza Hut. So, you know, Sirianni's an embarrassment to the Italian guys out there. Hey, Pizza Hut. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I wish I, I, I bought a Pizza Hut. I'd stick it in his face. And uh, Jason says, I think we're going to give secondaries trouble. Hyatt, Hodgins, Campbell, Beasley, Slayton, Waller, Bellinger, Saquon. Yeah, I think we have a different style of weaponry. Like, we don't have the traditional, like what the Bengals have, with Jamar Chase and Higgins. We don't have that type of offense, but we have guys that could still create mismatches. Barkley, Waller, Hyatt with his speed. Can't We definitely have guys it's that... Way better than it was last year. There's threats better. everywhere way now. Way better. Way better. And Waller's only going to make Barkley better and everybody. So... yeah. We have potential to be a top 10 offense this year. I don't think that's far-fetched at all to think that. At all. Matter and of Daniel fact, Jones has, a, has the ability to be a top 10 quarterback this year because I don't think he was much farther down than top 10 last year. I, top yeah. dozen? Daniel Jones last year was a top 10 quarterback. 
He's I, running I, around there. Daniel Jones was a top ten quarterback last year. QBR, yeah. you're sixth. <laughs> like, I, okay, like let's look at last year. Oh, not to mention, the- I think they said he would have led the league. You, I don't remember they said he would have led the league in completion percentage. He would have been top five had he not had all them damn drops. Yeah, a lot of drops last year. Daniel Jones was a top ten quarterback last year. I, 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 I will debate anybody on that. Last year. Um, he was when you factor in what he had for a support system, where he got his team. Uh, dude, the guy was a top 10 quarterback last year. Um, let's see, what we got, let's see, what we got amazing guy says, I think the Giants could trade for Cup or Evans, elite wide receivers on bad team. Mm, I mean, we'll see at the deadline. I, I, but what I'll say, amazing guy, I don't think the Giants are going to do that. I don't think the Giants are going to do that because we saw last year, Joe Shane is not a guy. That's going to overspend at the trade deadline. And more often than not, when you have to make a trade <coughs> trade deadline, you're probably going to pay more than you want to pay, uh, especially for a rental. So I don't think Shane, I mean, who knows? Maybe an opportunity really presents itself and they could get somebody for good value. But and I'm sure he'll explore it. But I don't think Joe Shane's going to risk damaging the future to help the present. Uh, not yet, at least maybe in a year or two, but not yet. Uh, Jason says, can we get Justin Houston in here, please? I would love it. I've been talking about adding Justin Houston to this team for <laughs> two or three years. I don't know what his market is, though, you know, but I think he's a great fit. He's got some experience with Wink. He would be a great rotational edge. He's older. The guy's a walking, talking eight sacks every year. Um, but, you know, I don't know what his price is, you know. I don't know what his price is, but we don't have a, lot, a whole lot of money to be, you know, be able to shell out. But I would love to add Justin Houston. I, it, I think he'd make a lot of sense for this defense right now. Um, yeah, so I, I'll give my argument right now for why Danny Jones was a top 10 quarterback last year. He, he took a team uh, to the second round of the playoffs last year that nobody thought had any business sniffing the playoffs, played the most important position. He had the lowest interception percentage in the NFL, the lowest. OK, <laughs> 60. And that's not that's percentage. So I don't want to hear they didn't throw a lot. No, it's based off of percentage the amount so he was he was also fifth in, so this is a fact he was fifth in completion percentage and if they had not had all those drops he would have been first yeah he he maximized how many quarterbacks could you say in the nfl last year maximized the game plan maximize what they had on the roster he's one of them and i don't think there's more than 10 so based on what he was asked to do based on what he was asked to do for the best interest of the team winning football games in my opinion last year daniel jones was the top 10 quarterback he just was. Um, let's see. Aiden says, hopefully they sign an edge. I, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, bu- 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 bu. When Daniel Jones was drafted, the knock was his completion percentage being 51 last year. He completed 67% of his passes. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. We'll see. I, I think he's going to have a really good year this year, and people aren't even going to be able to debate his stats, but I'm looking forward to it. Frankie G says, okay, but like you, you got to say Daniel Jones is better than, of course he's better than Justin Fields right now, up to this point. It's not even close. Zach says, the media has everyone thinking DJ is trash and it's getting old. Of course he's top 10. One games uh, with practice squad wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah, though, what's the most important position on a football team? Quarterback. Would you, do you think this is a fair statement to say that the Giants collectively last year especially when you factor in that it was a rotate for the first 10, 11 weeks, it was a rotating door at wide receiver. They had one of the bottom five wide receiving cores in football. That, I, I think it might even be worse, but is it fair to say bottom five? It was pretty bad. They, they also, they also had a rotating door on the offensive line. Yeah. As well. is, yeah. Is it fair to say that they had a bottom five to eight offensive line? It wasn't good. Bottom 10, definitely bottom third, bottom third. So yeah, that wide receiving core was Bad, and then you had a bunch of injuries. So, Tyler. like, well, and he was in the first year in an offense, and he beat, you know, if we're going to just look at quarterbacks and winning, I mean, he, he beat Aaron Rodgers, he beat Lamar Jackson, he beat Justin Fields, the greatest quarterback since sliced bread, he beat uh, Ryan Tannehill, if you want to consider him a good quarterback at this point, uh, Lamar Jackson, he beat him. He's a top-ten quarterback last year, but everybody looks at the stats. Uh, Zach says, uh, yeah, and I agree with you, Zach. And Independent says, any opportunities for Shane to draft for 2024 draft picks? We're building the we are building the right way, but still need D line, O line, depth, inside linebacker, and guards. Any opportunity for uh, Shane to draft? I don't know what he means by that. Any opportunities for Shane to draft for 2024 draft picks? You mean trade? I think he meant to say trade for 2024 draft picks. 
Um, I mean, it's possible. I But if we're competing this year, I don't think we're trading anybody away. I think we're going to try to compete to win. Uh, hopefully we don't do that. Maybe maybe in the draft we trade down to accumulate more draft capital. But next year we're going to have a lot of needs. We are. I, I don't want to think about next year because I'm, I'm super excited for this year. But next year we're going to need another corner. I think we're going to lose a Dory. We're going to need another inter- interior defensive lineman. I think we're going to lose Leonard Williams. Um, probably going to need a safety uh, and another linebacker. We're going to need a wide receiver. We're going to need an interior offensive lineman. So, yeah, we're going to definitely need, you know, this team's far from a finished product, but we're getting closer. We're definitely getting closer. Sports Biased says DJ had the highest on target percentage last year. Listen, until he puts up the 40 touchdowns, people are going to say, you know, whatever, but I don't care. I know we could win with the guy, and I'm excited that he's the quarterback for this football team this year. V-Rock says New York Giants D-line hasn't looked this good since the Tuck era, if they could stay on the field. If they could stay on the field, and I'm not going to say that yet because they got I, – I agree that they have the potential to be the best pass rush this team has had since the Tuck era. That I agree with. But they got to stay on the field. Kayvon Thibodeau's got to do what we think he's going to do. I'm with so, you. So I just saw somebody said the Bear in the chat, the Bears had a worse offensive line than the Giants. You would take PFF for what it's worth, okay? I don't really – this is just what came up here. I don't know where else to go. Giants are ranked 29th on offensive line going into this year. It says there's no change in the final rankings from last year. So the Giants are 29th. Well, the Bears were 21st. And that last week of the season, they actually dropped from 14 to 21 in the last week of the season. So obviously the Bears offensive line was better. The Bears offensive line last year was absolutely better than the Giants offensive line. Way better than the Giants offensive line. Yeah. And there's Jackson, a lot, of Justin, a, lot of Justin, a lot of people white nighting for Justin Fields out here. Fantasy football. What are you going to do? It is fantasy football. It's That's the sport. It's ruined the sport. Jacks, man, thank you for being a member for 25 months. Who will be the middle linebacker to Beavers or McFadden? And also hoping Hyatt gets playing time in game one after what coach said to Hyatt at Pro Day. I listen, I thought it was going to be McFadden based on what we said. And I, I'm not there, but based off what I'm hearing, it seems like Beavers is getting a lot of first team reps. He's getting <laughs> write ups. Seems like Beavers got a good shot. Um, during the uh, OTAs, it looked like McFadden was getting a lot of the first team reps, but Beavers may have still been kind of recovering from the injury last year. At that, Beavers point. looked good last year until he got Be- hurt. Yeah, Beavers looked good. So we'll see. Uh, but right now, it seems like Beavers has a pretty good shot. Um, I thought I thought McFadden was the favorite going in. Another guy we haven't talked about tonight. I think he deserves to be recognized based off of. I mean, how about the interception the dude had? Pinnock. Oh yeah, Pinnock. It, He's going to run away with that safety spot. I, yeah. th- I, thought it was, I thought it was an open competition going into camp between him, McCain, Belton. Pinnock's getting all the first team reps. And a- everything right, that, was, was, that was a gimme that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me that. But he, yeah, but oh, what a play that was. But he's, uh, I think he's running away with it. I think he's going to be the starting safety opposite McKinney. He's had a really good camp by all, all accounts. Yep. So that's good to hear. He was, he was a player I liked last year. So, f- former Jet, by the way. Jason says, Jones is top 10, in my opinion. Just look at that playoff game versus the Vikings. He shredded them, and I don't want to hear how bad the Vikings' defense was. Well, that's what the detractors will tell you. Oh, that defense sucked. Doesn't matter. He's still going to go out there and perform. First playoff game. I'm, I'm going to go back and say it. <laughs> First playoff game. Minnesota won 13 games last year. He went into their building and took their heart. First playoff game of his career. Vikings go down, score a touchdown. First play, holding penalty on the road. First and 20. From that point on, DJ was flawless. Tons of pressure. You're down 7 nothing before you even touch the football. And yep. you're first and 20. Goes right down the field, scores. Has one of the greatest statistical games in terms of a debut playoff game in the history of the NFL. What are we talking about? Jason Isn't says, that amazing, Chris? They all want to rag in the statistics. But when he actually puts up, go- oh, that's because the, the defense sucks. Worst game of his career, by the way. Right. So of course, again, whatever whatever fits your argument, everyone is screw skew it to fit your argument. Oh, he sucks. His stats are garbage. Well, he whipped the bikes. Well, their defense sucks. <laughs> I mean, we, what are we doing here, Colin? Thank you very much, man. Can't wait for Giants football. Love what Shane is doing. Unlike Cashman, who needs to be fired immediately. Yeah, go Giants. I mean, yeah, how could you not love what Joe Shane is doing? Joe Shane, bad dog, the, the, way that he's been, the way that he's been able to blend the here and now with the long-term roster building has been great. To, for him, to, we didn't even talk about it. 
because we're, we're focused on the on this year and training camp. The Andrew Thomas contract. My God, what you talking about last deal? week? Oh, we, we, did. About yeah, we did. Yeah, what a because I think that happened that day. But he did. He got. He got everybody. He got Barkley in camp, which again, you know, Barkley's not, but Barkley's a stand-up guy. But he got him there. I didn't think Barkley was going to play until week two. Barkley's there from day one. Locked up Daniel Jones. Locked up Dexter Lawrence. Locked up Andrew Thomas. Locked up three incredibly important pieces. But two, two of the most important pieces on offense, for sure. Two of the most important parts of your team. And interior linemen are getting paid the bag. So Sexy Dexy's there. Andrew Thomas is there. Now it's time to you know lock up McKinney. Although he's got what Phil Barkley does, he's got to have a good year this year, and I think he will. But he's yeah. got to he's got to have a good year this year. But if he does, yeah. I think they will lock him up. Um, but yeah, the job Joe Shane's done thus far as the Giants GM inherited the worst cap situation in the NFL. Signed signed three like record breaking deals. <laughs> Andrew yep. Thomas is the highest paid uh, left tackle in the history of the NFL in terms of guaranteed money. Lawrence got paid a mega deal. And Jones got paid a big deal. Um, yet the cap situation looks really good because he cleaned up all the bad contracts. He got him out of here. The way that he structured these deals, they're appropriate. They're spaced out well in terms of when the contract starts to hit. It gives himself some maneuverability. They can move the money around if need be. Like you could see that Joe Shane is definitely planning accordingly. You could yeah, tell. And, and Chris, how many one year deals did he sign this year where it's kind of like a prove a deal? You yeah. know, Shepard. Slate, oh no, Slate got two years, but but it's pretty much one, one year. year. It's one year. Let's be real. And yeah. Paris Campbell, like all those guys are one year deals. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, he knows what he's doing. Adrian Robinson, one year deal. He's using those guys as stop gaps till he finds his long term answer. And, and maybe they are long term answers. Yeah, which, so well, he's yeah. Got that, yeah. Which is what you're supposed to do. Hyatt yeah. is supposed to be the long term answer for Slate. And if he becomes what we think he's going to, yeah. Um, you know, Wandell maybe will be the long term answer for a guy like Paris sure. Campbell. If he Shepherd. thinks your Shepherd, if he becomes what we think he's going to. So that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use free agency as a tool to kind of, you know, fill in a hole for a couple of years. And then you let your, you know, your younger players mature, get better. And if they become a core piece like the Dexter Lawrence's, like the Andrew Thomas's, you lock them up before they hit free agency. You sign them to that five-year extension. Hopefully Kayvon's next in a couple of years. Evan Neal's next in a couple of years. And you keep keeping, you know, your core pieces in here long-term. Joe says, hello, guys. It's my mom's birthday. Well, happy birthday to your mom. Um, it's my my mom's birthday month. She loves you guys. Well, we love you. Thank you for being here. We love your mom. Thank you for watching. Please send her a shout out. Her name is Nancy Arias, 75 years young. God bless. God Nancy, bless indeed. Nancy, happy birthday, birthday, Nancy. Everybody in the chat. <laughs> Swish Nancy a happy 75th birthday. Happy birthday, Nancy. I've never seen you, but you don't look a day over 40. That's right. You have a you have a happy That's birthday, and thank you for being such a great supporter. That's a platinum time. birthday. 75 years is platinum. That's a, that's a, that's an accomplishment. Yes. That's an accomplishment. There yes. you go. Jason says, KT won his two games, Ravens. I'm not going to say he won us the Ravens game. He had the winning play in the Ravens game. The Commanders game, he won us the game. Yeah, he won us that one. Like, there's games where you – and that off the top of your head, Bad Dog, how many times have you seen a Giants defensive player – uh, let's exclude LT because I didn't get to see that error. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, he did it like every game. But, I was say a lot. but let's exclude LT. How many times have you seen a Giants pl defensive player, single OC did it with the six sack game against the Eagles, but how many times you don't see it that often? No. You just don't. Maybe five times, six times, seven times, ten yeah. times tops in my life. <laughs> yeah, LT did it all the time. I'm sure yeah, Strain was... had a couple of games, oh. but. Ram have a game Justin like that. Tuck, I mean, Justin Tuck, I, that Super Bowl, I mean, I don't want to say he's the lone reason, but, God, he was huge in that first Super Bowl against the, you know, yeah. the Patriots. He he was amazing in that Super Bowl. Maybe JPP did it. I mean, he had incredible. JPP definitely season. did it. JPP, good call. JPP yeah. definitely did it at least two or three times in that yeah. 2011. He had some big games, but it's rare. It's <laughs> rare. And, and I think that's why a lot of Giants fans, they saw that. That game. I mean, Reggie White did it. I mean, you know, for the Eagle. Oh, I mean, he was insane. Dominant. Derek Thomas. Yeah, but they're all Hall of Famers. I mean, that's that's yeah. what we're talking about. Michi says the Jets feels like the Packers 2.0 to me. I mean, well, it makes sense. They're adding all the Packers' former players. Randall Cobb. Uh, obviously, they added uh, Lazard, I think. Uh, so, it makes sense. But, of course, Rodgers. Uh, I will be surprised if the Jets make the playoffs. 
I wouldn't. I think they're going to make the playoffs. But I don't uh, think the only reason I, I say that gonna... is because the Jets will jet. It's just <laughs> not that they do anything wrong. Not that it's their fault. Yeah, they're just cursed. I don't think they're going to do damage in the playoffs. I just think the AFC is too loaded. But I think they'll make the playoffs. I just feel. I just feel like they. Something. It's the Jets. It's it's like the Mets. It's not for lack of trying or like make it. It's just. It don't work for whatever reason for those teams. They do have talent. They do everything right, and it just never works. <laughs> it's a. It's just the truth. I'm a Met fan. It's true. Going into this year, I said to myself, "Bad dog." Mets won what 103 games last year. Whatever it was, the, it was the second the second most games they've ever won in the history of their franchise in a single season. Yeah. So I go into the year, like, yeah, 86, 108. But I go into the year, I say, okay, we had Verlander, we had Sanga, we had Scherzer. Bullpen. We, we get Scherzer coming back. We had uh, what's his name, the, the former Dave Robertson. And what happens before the year starts? Edwin Diaz is out for the year with the World Baseball Classic. And then I say to myself, oh, we're screwed. It's a, the Mets will met. It's what happens. Mets will met. The Jets will jet. It's not because I'm like hating on the Jets. Yeah. Oh, they're like the, the Jets are like the Mets to me. I don't want the Jets make the AFC playoffs. I root for the Jets. They're not the Giants' rival. The Mets are not the Yankees. I know Mets fans don't like the Yankees. I have no problem with the Mets at all. I hate the Red Sox. I don't care for Toronto right now. I don't like Tampa Bay. Um, so I don't really dislike any baseball teams outside of Boston. I hate Boston. In football, it really is. My hate is really concentrated on Dallas and Philadelphia. But the other conference, I don't hate anybody in the AFC. I really don't. I just they're the AFC. I don't hate. I don't really hate any teams outside of our division. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't like anybody. I'm I'm, I'm a one team guy. I'll always be a one team yeah. guy. I have a soft spot in my heart for the Jets because family members and friends, but I'm not. I don't. I'm, I don't consider myself a fan of them. I if I if I had a soft spot for anything, it would be uh, Minnesota. I've always had a soft spot for the Vikings just because I, again, I'm, I'm a, a big historian. Like I love the history of football, and, and I just love football, baseball, basketball, especially baseball. I, I just I, I'm such a historian. But the '70s Vikings teams were so good, but they just ran into dynasties. They ran into the Dolphins dynasty. They ran into the 76 Raiders, which is one of the greatest teams of all time. They ran into the beginning of the Steelers dynasty. They ran into the They're always the a dominant team in the NFC, but they ran into some of the best teams that ever were, and they lost in the Super Bowl. And then 98, yeah. they had no business. Gary Anderson didn't miss a field goal the entire year. They win if he makes that chip shot 39 yarder. He misses it and they lose in overtime. And, and then the dirty Super birds Bowl. got embarrassed in the Super Bowl. That was a horrible Super Bowl. It was horrible. Uh, but but then and then and then they run into the Giants. 41 nothing. Don't forget that. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I always tell a story like I just started dating my wife. I think we'd been together, probably been together eight months at the time. She didn't really like football. And I told her my like, I don't worry. I was like, they're not gonna beat Minnesota. I'm like, they got Randy Moss, they got Chris Carter. Probably not going to beat this team. Dante Culpepper was playing really well. And I just remember two passes and then that Kerry Collins. go, man, he looks good today. And they threw a touchdown and we're going to the Super Bowl. It, I didn't expect Collins, 40 or nothing, but Collins, he looks amazing. Collins had a perfect quarterback rating that game, I think. Oh, he was so good. And LT's like, yeah, you know, LT was on the sideline. And I remember Madden and someone going, LT's like, he didn't have this kind of offense that I played here. Yeah. Yeah, th th they were ridiculous that day. Jack says, yeah. bad like I heard you love Cashman. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big yeah, catch, man. I think I think you're gonna finally move off of him. River Rombin says, "Hey, bad dog, Chris. Justin Fields is not overrated. He's unstoppable dual threat quarterback. That is the fastest quarterback since Michael Vick. I don't deny that he could become a really good quarterback. I just think people that are already calling the top ten quarterback, you're overrating him. He hasn't done it yet. He hasn't done it yet. Could he yeah, just because you can run fast doesn't make you a good quarterback. It means you can run fast. But there's there's more to being a quarterback than being able to run fast. Michael Vick was not a great thrower." He was way before his time. He was explosive. He was exciting. But Michael Vick wasn't a guy that threw 60, you know, completed 65% of his passes. Until, 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 he, met, until he met Andy Reid. Right. The and then he, then, he, right. then he played like an MVP. Yeah. KN says, we need to run the ball well this year. Our division is filled with pass rushers. I don't want to fall in love with dropping back and letting it go. But we're not going to, KN. We're not we're not gonna become the you know a team that throws sixty five percent of the time. Giants ain't getting away from their strengths. They still realize that running the ball is definitely a strength of this team, but they're gonna open it up more. I think they're gonna look to hit bigger, longer, more explosive passing plays, something that they didn't really have in this offense yeah. last year. 
which is only going to enhance the running game. But I don't expect this Giants t- team to abandon the run. At the end of the day, their best weapon is still Saquon Barkley. And, and their second best weapon may be Daniel Jones's legs. Like, he is a really good runner, obviously Waller. But they're not abandoning the running game. That's still going to be a big part of this offense. But the running game should only be enhanced by having the threat of big play opportunities in the passing game, by adding a Darren Waller, by adding a Jalen Hyatt, by bringing in a Paris Campbell. So having a full year with an Isaiah Hodgins. So we're not going to become this team that throws 65, 70% of the time. I still think we're not going to be the chiefs. No, but like Chris said, you're, you're going to see more shots down the field. Yeah. And I think you're going to see cast off the shackles for Daniel Jones. Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to see Daniel Jones. They're definitely going to trust him more. Um, Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't see us dropping back 45 times a game at the end of the day. Everything I, does not matter how much this game changes. It stays the same. You win in the trenches. If you're able to run the ball, if the Giants can run the ball, it just makes everything better because everybody has to bite up at the line. And when Barkley's able to run the ball, that just enhances Daniel Jones' ability to run the ball. When, when that's happening, you don't know who to stop. And then you play action pass. And he got Kafka, who's a very creative call, you know, play caller. There's all kinds of things that they can do. So, yeah, I don't think you're going to see them just chuck the ball over the field. But you're going to see a lot more deep shots and a lot more explosive plays than we have at any time Daniel Jones has been there. Because he does not have this type of weaponry around him. I just pulled up the run frequency stats last year. I'm actually surprised the Giants weren't higher. Um, For the year, we were 11th in run frequency. I thought we'd be like top five or six. Uh, And over the last three games, as you started to see, we opened up the offense more. They actually ranked 30, uh, 29, 28, 27, 27. They actually ranked 23rd in the NFL last year in the last three games of the regular season uh, in terms of run frequency. They only uh, ran the ball 61% of uh, – I'm sorry, 38% of – 39% of the time. But I think it'll be a little more balanced than that. I think we'll, we'll probably run – last year we ran 47% of the time. I think it'll be more like 43-44. I, I, I don't – you're not going to completely abandon the run, bad dog. I mean, Saquon Barkley's still our best weapon. Uh, we're still not a team that, ha- you know, in terms of it's not a strength of ours, our pass protection. We're actually better right. run blockers. Um, and you can't just abandon Daniel Jones's like game either. That's a big part of what makes him successful. So I think we'll I think we'll throw a little bit more, not a ton more. But when we throw, we're going to it's going to be more frequent that we throw down the field. Yeah. Um, there'll, be bigger plays. there'll be bigger plays to be had for sure. Yeah. This year. And Jason says, I don't get the love affair for Julian Love. He was an okay player, but some overhype him. I think you will be fine with uh, – we will be fine with Pinnock, Bet- uh, Benton, and McCain. I mean, Julian Love was a good player for us. I'm not going to I'm not gonna just, like, crap on the guy. He was a good player for us. And I, my guess is Pinnock won't be quite as good as Love. But, yeah, I, I agreed with let it, letting him go. Well, he ended up, ended up getting less than I thought he would. But I wasn't in favor of giving him more than 6 or $7 million. I think he ended up getting 6 because the market kind of collapsed. Um, but he's definitely a replaceable guy. He's not like a, you know, an elite player. I don't think he's a cornerstone player. He's not a guy that you commit four or five years to. Let's put it that way. He's replaceable, and hopefully Pinnock could do a good job doing it. But he's a good player. I'm not going to crap on him. Rogati, man, thank you so much for the dollar donation. And Toasty says, last time the Jets won, the moon landing hadn't happened. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, Daniel Jones wasn't alive. I know. I wasn't even old enough to drink. I'm almost 50 now. It's insane. <laughs> and Jason Benjamin really says, is. if KT don't sack Lamar, the Ravens are going to score, in my opinion. Oh, I agree it was a game-winning play. I'm just saying that game wasn't a game where you said start to finish, he won us the game. With the Washington game, you felt that way. That That's all I'm saying. It was a special game. Obviously, the Ravens game, that was a very special play. James Marshall says, Bellinger and Waller will be our Gronk and Hernandez. Without the whole murder thing. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. As long, as long as Bellinger doesn't do anything stupid. I mean, <laughs> that'd be nice. Um, we'll see. I, I do like Bellinger. Uh, he's not Aaron Hernandez. In term, I mean, neither as a murderer or as a weapon. Aaron Hernandez was really good. Yeah, uh, he, was. Remember, he was really good. He was. Um, but I do think it's a nice, a nice, you know, duo at the tight end spot for sure. Bellinger, I think, is going to be asked to be more of a blocker this year, but I think he will, like we talked about last week. He will have opportunities in the passing game because the attention is going to be on Waller. The attention is going to be on Slayton and Campbell and everybody else, and he's going to kind of be the forgotten guy. So I could definitely see him having a pretty – 
decent to good season. More, maybe more yards than some people may expect going into the year. But he's not Aaron Hernandez in terms of a talent. No. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, hopefully without the murdering is right. And Fisher, thank you, man. He says, why, uh, why do you think Saquon signed a one-year contract? Shouldn't he want a longer? Uh, he didn't have a choice. I mean, that's what it came down to, Fisher. I, 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 I don't want to speak badly about anybody because it's over with. It's done with. I'm happy that Saquon's a giant. I'm happy that he seems to be happy. That was kind of my biggest concern that this was going to be something that dragged into camp and it was a storyline and it was a distraction for the team. And I did think in, in an ideal world, you know, it was fair to give Saquon a two-year commitment, like I always said, like a $22, $23 million guaranteed contract. Um, but I understood it from both sides, especially after the Giants got more leverage after they tagged him. Um, you got to think it from the, line, the mind of a GM as much as you do from a player, you know, so you got to – that's at least the way that I try to analyze these situations when they're put in these spots. So I understood it from both sides. I'm just glad it's over and done with. I think at the end, Saquon Barkley said to himself – I got no leverage at this point. He probably should have taken the final deal that the Giants offered him. The only thing that makes any sense to me as to why he didn't, you know, because he ended up signing this deal, which is basically the franchise tag three or four days later before camp started. And reportedly the Giants offered him 22 million guaranteed. <laughs> the only reason I could think that he wouldn't have signed it is one ego. He didn't want to come across as a guy that signed a contract for, for less than what he thought he was worth. And two, he wants the freedom to be able to hit the open market next year. But there's no guarantee the Giants won't tag him again unless there's an under-the-table agreement, which is why uh, Saquon maybe came into camp and maybe discussed it with Shane. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. I, I thought, you know, that's why I said I was very confident uh, as it got down to the, you know, the final minutes, the final hours. I was very confident that Saquon was going to sign because he was going to come to the realization that if he was going to get 20 to 22 million guaranteed, which is reportedly what he was offered, it was the smart move because you get two tags up front. Um, it didn't work out that way, but I'm just glad he's here. I'm glad he's playing for this team, and I'm glad he's not, you know, it's, the situation isn't a distraction for the Giants going into camp. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad he's here for the entire training camp. I'll be ready to go week one and. Yeah, we, we, you know, you get those distractions out of the way now with the media that, you know, they got other questions in about it that should be the end of it. Unlike him coming in at the end of camp, then he would have had to hear that would have been the whole story the entire week one taken away from the game. So, yeah, I, I think Barkley's agent had a lot to do with the Barkley's agent screwed this up. I, you know, I, they just overvalued the run. It happens. I mean, you took a shot, you missed. I mean, everybody fails at one point or another. Everybody, nobody's perfect. So, they just thought he was worth more. And in the first half of the year, he was killing it. He looked like an MVP, you know, and yeah. he kind of tailed off at the end of the year. Maybe he got whatever it was, but they did. And, you know, Patty mentioned it before. She said they, you know, they were working. They did not talk to Daniel Jones during the bye week at all about his contract. And, you know, the media was all over. You know, everybody said, oh, they don't want Daniel Jones back. They're good, Barkley. But Patty said the Daniel Jones contract would be much easier than a Saquon one. And that's why they started early and they never got it. They never got it done. But yeah, he's here for 2023. We'll worry about 2024 and 2024. And I think he'll be here for 2024. I do. I, I, if he stays healthy and plays well this year, I think he'll be here yeah. for 2024. I think we'll tag him again or, or we'll sign him to a deal that is easy to get out of after two years. It, you know, who knows? But I, I, I'm leaning that he'll be back. It, it seems yeah. like him and the Giants are on good terms. He, I think he also sees the value in playing and finishing your career as a giant. He sees what it did for Michael Strand after retirement. He sees what it did for Tiki Barber after retirement. I think he wanted to be here. No, no oh, question. he definitely wants to be here. He comes from here, right? He grew up here. So I, I think he'll be here next year if I had to guess. But we'll see. I worry about that next year. I'm excited about yeah, exactly. what he's going to do. And, and again, like, like we talked about before he signed, he, he had nothing to get. He, he would have only lost had he sat out. Yeah. At the end of the day, he get $11 million. Well, ten million. You have a chance to make eleven million. You get ten point one million dollars. That's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Who 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 here is making ten point one million dollars in their career, let alone in one year? Okay, so. But, but but to be fair, to put it in context, bad dog. Every no matter what you make, you want to. I understand it. Well, relative. No, I I get yeah, that. Yeah, everybody wants to feel like they get paid their value. But ten million dollars is ten million dollars. Like I'm not. Ten million dollars. It's ten million bucks. It's that he wasn't going to get back. Yeah, I agree. And he I wasn't going to increase his value sitting on the couch. Yeah, no, I 
that, and I think that's he came to the realization of that. that exactly. it, was not, it was only going to hurt him if he didn't exactly. if he didn't come to camp. Bill, well, I'm, just he, I'm just glad he's here now. Exactly, and not we because he could have. That was that was his whole card, you know. Yeah, I can sit out. <clears throat> I can sign Friday before we play Dallas, and I'll get my entire contract, and then I'll screw the Giants. And he said that he said I could I could say up the Giants, but I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> but I think it showed his character. Yeah. Showed that you know showed that he I he, I think he put his teammates above. And I I still have that video that I took of him <clears throat> walking past us at Dicks because the freaking guys are. Five foot six. What the hell are they gonna? How the hell are they gonna protect Barkley? I'm like, could we get the man some security? <laughs> I mean, literally, I, I'm like, you know, what the? Bill, man, no, man, Bill, thank you so much, man. <laughs> in here, always been such a great supporter. Appreciate you, man. He says, sorry I'm late, but don't ever apologize, man. I appreciate you for popping in. He says, good to see you. Joe is absolutely killing it. Hard to find a misstep, misstep since he joined. Rare for a new GM. Yeah, I mean, listen, we don't, we can't really judge his drafts yet. We're excited about this draft, um, but you can't really, you know, analyze at least fully a draft class for probably at least three or four years after, you know, we, you see it, right? Certain players develop more so than others, right? The Dexter Lawrence pick going into last year was a good one. It wasn't a great one. Now it's a great one. Uh, the Daniel Jones pick, most said, was a bad pick going into last year. Now it's at least a good one. He got a second contract. Um, so over time, I think you could get a better grasp of, you know, how, you know, how draft classes go, but in terms of his vision, in terms of his plan, in terms of his roster building, yeah, it's as clear as day. The guy knows how to build a roster in the modern in day. In terms NFL. of his cap usage and understanding of the cap, yeah. he's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And Brandon Brown has a lot to do with that too. Remember these two yeah, guys yeah. came from the two best organizations when it comes to salary cap. Yeah. That's why I always mention Brandon Brown and these things too, because he has a lot to do with it. For sure. I hate the Eagles, but Howie Roseman knows what the hell he's doing with the cap. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon Brown gonna, comes from there. Brandon so. Brown's going to get a job soon. I'm telling you. He he he's going to get a job soon, and Kafka's going to get a job soon. But luckily, I believe in the guys we have in charge. I think they'll be able yeah. to still keep this thing afloat. Shane, man, thank you very much, man. Listen, I'm a Kayvon believer. But all, aren't all the stats coming in one game a reflection of kind of a poor year for him? Looking for a big step in year two. He's a rookie. He's a rookie. Uh, to me, well, he missed the first few games with an injury. Yeah, he had no Aziz on the other side all year either. By the way, right? So he had no, there was no real threat on the other side. So teams were constantly doubling him, holding him. Um, no, I mean statistically, I get your point, Shane, because like you said, I went over the stats. A fourth of his tackles for the year came in that one Washington game. But I think the fact that you saw elite traits out of a rookie, I think that's really promising. Uh, he showed, like in my opinion. He showed potential to be a top five or six edge rusher in the NFL. Not every player is even capable of showing you that. So I'm excited. I think he's only going to get better as he gets more experience. And I think he's going to break out this year. I, I've said that. Now he's got his buddy on the other side back to play with him all year. We have an improved defensive line. You got to figure he's going to mature year two. I think much like Jason Pierre-Paul, and I'm not saying he's going to have a Jason Pierre-Paul year two, but Pierre-Paul had a similar rookie year. He didn't do a whole lot. And then his second year, he exploded. He was like third for defensive player of the year. He had like 16 sacks. I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm not setting those kind of expectations. But I think you're going to see a big jump in terms of consistency week to week uh, from Kayvon Thibodeau this year. I think he's going to be a, a really good player in the NFL this year. The only thing I'll say, and I say it all the time, statistics still half the story. Yeah. If you watch Kayvon Thibodeau, he was a, he was a, you he could was tell a he was a big-time disruptor. Yeah. He didn't always get the guy, but he forced a lot of things. He was held a shitload. Every game. Um, I mean, I don't know how many times the guy got held. The guy got held almost every play, it seemed like. And that game against Dallas, I don't know what his stats were in Thanksgiving, but that man was everywhere yeah. on that field. So, again, he's a disruptor. He makes, you know, he can make a play for somebody else. I mean, that's what happens. You have to worry about him. You start having a double team him, it's going to open it up for somebody else. Those type of things don't get shown in the box score. So just looking at his play, yeah, his sack numbers are lackluster. And even he said, you know, on Instagram, he's like, I looked at my rookie season. I'm pissed. I, I want to do a lot better. Hey, and hey, he's hey, got to hey. don't give a damn. So I love hey, his hey. attitude. He He's he's going to have a good year. I, I love him. And his pre he, like you said, the pressures were there. He got a lot of pressures. He got hits. He just didn't. He didn't close, finish the deal as much as you, maybe you would like as a fan, but he definitely was a disruptor. He definitely showed a lot of potential. And the other thing I want to point out about Kayvon, the biggest red flag of his going into last year that you heard everybody say character concerns. He's been the complete opposite, the complete yeah. opposite. 
Yep. People like New York, character concerns. He, takes plays he, off. Takes plays off. It didn't look like he took many plays off to me. You remember when he rushed uh, to catch Travis Etienne in that Jaguars game where he went from sideline to sideline, yeah. you know, 60 yards down the field? So, to me, Kayvon was the exact opposite of how he was portrayed. The guy worked hard every game, every play. Um, yeah, and he's doing it again in training camp. You see it every every game now, every uh, after every practice, rather. He's spending time after running laps, so he's in better physical condition for the start of the season. So that's the other thing I'll say about Kayvon. I think that was uh, overstated. Let's put it that way, at the very least. People that said that there were character concerns going in, I think he's been the complete opposite of that. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to have a big year this year. I can't wait uh, to see Kayvon in a Giants uniform this year. Bill, man, thank you again, man. I appreciate it, man. He says, Saquon had bad advice from the first f- from that first female agent. She was pushing him hard to prove herself, and Saquon got screwed probably why he dumped her. Uh, did he end up dumping? I know he added more representation. I don't know if he dumped He Maybe he did. Maybe I missed that. I know, I know he added representation. I don't know if he dumped her, but he should have if he didn't. And, yeah, I think in the end, I think a, a big reason why it dragged on as much as it, as long as it did had as much to do with her as it did him because it's her reputation on the line as much as anybody, right? As an agent, you got to prove yourself, especially when you have high-profile you know, clients like Saquon Barkley, that you can land a, a, a good deal to attract other players from around the NFL. So I definitely think it dragged on as long as it did. That Her reputation had a lot to do with it, for sure. Um, and obviously, she didn't do a very good job. <laughs> you know, they should have probably realized, you know, ahead of time that there was a good chance that the, the Giants would use the tag. I think the only thing that makes any reasonable, rational sense to me, what she was thinking as the agent, was that the Giants were going to have to tag Jones. That's the only right. thing that makes sense to me. She thought that the Giants were going to have to tag Jones, that they weren't going to be able to work out a deal before the tag deadline. And if they tag Jones, Barkley would have all the leverage, both with the Giants and around the NFL, because there would be 30 teams bidding on his services. His market would be $14, $15 million a year. So I think that's what happened. I, I think they gambled that the Giants were, were going to have to tag Jones right before the tag deadline. The Giants, of course, got the deal done five minutes before the tag deadline. And they snapped their fingers, and, and suddenly Saquon Barkley was tagged. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Otherwise, they should have taken the deal up front before the tag deadline, no, you know, knowing that they at least had a little bit of leverage at that point because you didn't know whether or not you were going to have to tag Daniel Jones. That's the only thing that makes any sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? it does make sense. But, again, if you, if you thought about it <clears throat> from <clears throat> the ages perspective, you'd have to start thinking to yourself, well, they tag Jones at $32 million and they can't maneuver the money. Yeah. So what else are they going to do? How are they even afford Bar- – if they if they did that, I mean, how are they going to afford Barkley? I guess you just figured, well, if they tag – like you said, they tag Jones, you're going to hit the open market. Yeah. And you'll get paid somewhere else. Yeah, I think, that, I think that was the pl- – I think he wanted to come back with the Giants, but he w- they, wanted, they wanted him to dr- – obviously, and, and they as they should have. Because that would have been, there's your supply and demand. Yeah, yeah. But, but- – it worked work out, out for us. Yeah, it worked out for us is right. And C. Ginzo, man, thank you so much, man, for the $5 donation. I appreciate it. The Bull Don't Lie says, let's say Saquon breaks all running back records this year. Do we sign him long-term? Great work, guys. I appreciate it. Um, No. No. I just don't. I, I, I could see if Saquon has another great year, I could see what I thought I could see this offseason. I could see a two-year commitment. I could see because you give me 27 next year. Uh, Saquon, almost no matter what he does this year, and I don't think he's going to have a record-breaking year this year, by the way, because I think they're going to have a little bit more. I'm not Obviously, he's still going to be the main back, but I think they're going to have a little bit more of a running back by committee, and I think they're going to throw it a little bit more, <laughs> meaning that he's not going to be as featured this year. He's still going to be the most featured player in this offense, but I don't think he's going to be as featured. Um, but even if he did match last year's statistics or slightly exceeded last year's statistics, He's not worth as much next year as he was this year because he's a year closer to that age where running backs fall off. Almost all running backs fall up around 29. Barry Sanders retired when he was like 30. Um, well, he, didn't, he didn't fall off. Like he didn't fall, no, he didn't fall off. But like Jim saying, Brown, those guys just retired at the peak of their career. If you look at it, if you look at running backs production historically, by the year 29, 28, 29, that's where they start to oh, fall yeah. off. Their prime Every- is right out of college. Every GM has that information, and they don't fall off gradually. They fall off, like, out of nowhere, like Todd Gurley. They just they just completely fall off a cliff. 
So I don't think it matters what Barkley does this year. I don't think the Giants are signing him next year to a huge contract. It, it could be a tag. Maybe it could be a deal similar to what I thought this year that was a possibility. But I don't see anything more than that. I see a two-year tag commitment or a tag. That that's about it. I don't see. I, I, I don't unless he hits the open market. Then who knows? Maybe somebody does give him a ridiculous contract, but not from the Giants. Let's put it that way. But thank you, man. I appreciate it, buddy. And Giants, uh, what's up, King, man? Good to see you, man. Giants are not going to offer Bar uh, Barkley any other offer. He will be tagged again, and the Giants will be done. Uh, pro you, I'm leaning you might, you might be right. I, unless his market comes down after that, and maybe he's a good player, not a great player, and they could sign him to a reasonable deal as he, you know, finishes out his career as a Giant. But I don't see them breaking the bank for him because I just don't think that's the way Shane envisions building this team. And as a fan, I think you got to realize that Shane didn't draft Saquon Barkley. Shane is entitled to want to build this team the way that he sees fit. And the way that Shane sees fit long-term is the way that 95% of the general managers around the league see the proper way to build a football team. Not many teams are going out there spending big bucks on a running back because they know as great as players like Saquon Barkley are, they're replaceable long-term. If you could build up your line, you could find value at the running back spot in the draft. That's just the unfortunate reality of the situation for, for Barkley. I, I, I don't know who said it. I happened to glance over there. Somebody said Jim Brown is overrated. That's a massive L. I don't. I, <laughs> oh, he's one of the top. Jim Brown one of the greatest running backs in the history. It's not even close. Yeah. I, whoever the hell said that knows there's nothing about the history of football. Jim Brown was. <laughs> I mean, he, he, every every GM in the league has this information, bad dog. The, the, all you got to do is look at this chart when you, you know, when you when you say to yourself, okay, it makes sense why they don't pay running backs big contracts. Um, <laughs> look at this chart. This is this is the production for running backs. Year 25, 24 to 26 is your peak years. Yeah. 27, you start to tail off. Barkley's 26 this year. 27, 28 by 29, typically you fall off a cliff. So everybody has that information, and that's why Joe Shane, knowing that, is not going to commit a, a long-term deal to Saquon Barkley. That's just a fact. If Barkley would have never gotten hurt, he would have been 24 after his third year. That's when he would have gotten his big extension. It didn't happen. He had bad luck. It's the life of the NFL. It's just the facts. Unfortunate. I, you know, I love Barkley, but that's just the facts, man. Yeah. And um, and, and thank you, Ginzo. Uh, I appreciate it, man. He says, I think I read it. I just want to make sure. Excited about the offense, but Waller and Campbell have a history of injuries. Why should we think this year is different? Love you guys, by the way. I love you too, man. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody, every, every year is different. You're, no, you're right. I, I think you should go into the year at least cautiously optimistic that these – now, what I will say, if I'm going to talk from an optimistic standpoint, at least for Campbell, Campbell's injuries historically have kind of been fluky, and last year he played a full season. He played the full 17 games for the Indianapolis Colts, so last year at least he demonstrated he's able to stay on the field. Waller, yeah, Waller's been banged up. Waller's had an injury history, and I'm going to go into the year telling you right now, Ginzo, I don't expect Waller to play all 17 games this year. Um, I just hope he doesn't have a season ending injury and I hope, you know, hopefully he give us 13 games, maybe he misses three or four. He's not going to play all 17 games because game 17, we're resting our guys like we did last year. <laughs> He's going to play 16. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I think that's fair to at least be like, yeah, the, you got to at least worry, put that in the back of your head. These guys, there's a reason we were able to sign Paris Campbell to a one-year deal. He's got enough talent to be a featured wide receiver in, in a lot of offenses in the NFL, but he hasn't been able to stay on the field. It's why we were able to get him on a one-year deal. There's a reason we were, we only had to go up a third-round pick to get Darren Waller because he's been injured the last couple of years. So, yeah, I, I that's definitely a, a bit a fear, a bit of a fear going into the year. But it is what it is. Injuries happen in the NFL. Hopefully, these guys could stay relatively healthy. If they do, this is going to be a much better offense this year. Yep. And Bill, man, thank you, man. That dude, you don't have to do that, man. Thank you so much. He says Aziz and Waller having full productive seasons could be make or break for the playoff chances. We need those boys to stay healthy. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree. I think, all right, give me your most important players, Bad Dog, in terms of who cannot go down with an injury. Daniel give me, Jones. Give me, give, me, give me your eight. Let's, I'll just throw out a random number. Give me your eight most important players in order of who needs to stay healthy this year for this team. Daniel Jones. Yeah. Andrew Thomas. Yeah. Saquon Barkley. He's third for you, really. Yeah, I think Saquon Barkley has a lot to do with what we do. Oh, he's great. He's great. Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. Um, Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah. Xavier McKinney. Yeah. I think Bobby Okereke is. Yeah, he's got a lot to do with what we would. He's our best middle linebacker by far. 
and Evan Neal. I think Evan Neal has to has to be good. Our book and tackle is going to be really good, but we cannot so you have, lose. So you wouldn't have Waller in your in your eight most important players that need to stay healthy. I figure. Well, we we all got to the playoffs without him last year. Yeah. So I mean, he's obviously a, a huge, but I don't know what Waller is great. I don't know what he's going to be in this offense. I think I feel like he'll have a gigantic year, mm -hmm. but I, I just with those other guys. I think those three on offense are definitely the most important because Barkley is still our best player. Jones is our most important player. And you do not want to lose your blindside protector. Those offensive linemen are incredibly important. And then, yeah, your safety, your middle linebacker, your edge rusher, you know, Dexter Lawrence, those guys are important too. So I think it's four on each side of the ball. Um, I mean, I don't want to see Waller get hurt. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Of course I mean, not. Of course not. Of course not. Um, but – I just feel like those other guys because they've been here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a name that I he's probably not as high on my list as he was when I initially posted this on Twitter, uh, probably like a month ago when I talked about the guys that we could least afford to have uh, hit an injury. But one guy you didn't mention who I think would still definitely be relatively high mine is Adoree because our cornerback core is just so young and yeah. inexperienced. So I think he's a really important player that needs to stay healthy this year, which means no punt returns, Dable. Um, I think we could get by without Aziz. Obviously, I don't want it to happen. I don't want anybody to get hurt. And I think having Aziz build definitely enhances the defense because that's going to make Kayvon better, right? Because now if they double Kayvon, Aziz is going to be able to feast on the other side. So he's definitely – I'm not trying to downplay his importance. I was defense. disappointed Aziz didn't play a lot last year because I, I thought he was going to have a huge year. Yeah, but I, I think Waller is really important to this offense this year, especially if we want to open it up. So you got to hope he stays healthy. I mean, that's all there is to it. You got to know going into the year, there's a good chance he's going to probably miss at least three or four games, but hopefully not. Hopefully this year he stays healthy and he has a huge year for this team. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. But yeah, you're going a little bit cautiously optimistic because of the history of some of these players. As he's had injury troubles, um, obviously, um, uh, uh, you know, you worry about Andrew Thomas even a little bit. He's had a little bit of injury troubles. Barkley's had injury troubles. Jones has had injury troubles. So Paris Campbell. So there's definitely guys with an injury history on this team. You got to hope they stay healthy this year. Okay. But that's every team in the league, man. They'll get the end of the oh, it's a, That's a fact. It's that's every a fact. team in the league. It, 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 the teams that stay healthy throughout the course of the year, are the teams that get lucky, but every team has injury history. Cause if we're being honest, football is a game of injuries. It just is. And what I'm hoping, I think we have a smarter coaching staff, a smarter regime right now, year two, hopefully the conditioning, maybe these guys stay a bit healthier than they have in the past. Obviously the changing of the turf, maybe that has a little bit of a minor impact. Hopefully we stay healthier than we have in the past. Cause this team has been, even last year we were decimated by injuries. It's just that the, the main pieces stayed relatively healthy, but we still had a ton of injuries last year. We were on like our six string cornerback by like week eight. Like it was, it was bad. Um, so hopefully they can stay healthy this year. KN. Thank you very much, man. Today saw players play against the SoundCloud rappers and fan duel betters. Jim Brown is the man. How could you not? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Who, like I said, I just I didn't see. Who, so I just happened to read that. I'm like, what? How could you not respect Jim Brown? Jim, Jim Brown's not overrated. Jim Brown. But he did say in the chat, Emmett Smith is overrated. Yeah, that I agree with. Jim Tiki Brown Barber's Brown. better than Emmett Smith. I'm going to my grave saying it. Tiki was the man. Emmett played behind the greatest offensive line in the history of football and averaged just over four yards of carry. Ass. He was ass. Then when he left Dallas, he sucked. Huge. You're welcome, Emmett, because if Barry Sanders actually played another three years, you wouldn't have that record at all. Yeah. And if Tiki Barber played another five years, he probably would have, you know, he might have had more rushing yards than Emmett Smith at the rate he was going. Probably more scrimmage yards yeah. well, because, because he caught for a lot. No question he would have had more scrimmage yards. He had over yeah. 5,000 yards receiving yeah. in seven years starting in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he had three straight. He had, he had three straight. About a player I don't like. I don't like that guy at all. <laughs> Chris, Super Chris says, do, do you think Kopka will use Hyatt on both the outside and slot or just solely? I mean, I yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he uses him in both. He's, Kopka's a guy that's going to move players around to try to take advantages of the, of the deficiencies of the defense. And we've seen that for years against our defense, right? They've always tried to exploit our slot because we've always had poor slot play. So I, Kopka's smart enough to do the same thing. So if he feels like there's certain teams and certain players that Jalen Hyatt's speed, he could take advantage of a certain particular player 
by lining him up on the slot here and there? For sure. I think he could line him up in the slot. I think long term, obviously, he projects more so on the outside. Um, but yeah, I think they will move him around. I think mainly he'll be on the outside, but they'll definitely have some packages probably where, yeah, they do line him up in the slot. The, the NFL's changed. Like you don't have defined roles at the wide receiver position like you used to, right? Odell Beckham at times lined up in the slot. Like you, you move Victor Cruz, right? He played all over the place. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think Hyatt's like a guy like say like a Colin Johnson who, you know, is going to play exclusively on the outside. He's definitely a guy that you could move around a little bit, but I think he projects more so on the outside. John says, hey, I see you real quick. I was just going to say, I, my brother-in-law makes a good point. He says, Brian Dable needs to stay healthy. Yeah, <laughs> he's he the they start playing like a football team. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Dable is the freaking man, bro. He's the man. There's nobody more valuable to this team right now than Brian Dable. There's no denying that. Uh, <laughs> coach of the year last year. Yeah. John, man, what's going on, John? Good to see you, man. He says, Banksy says, if healthy, Aziz minimum 50. 15 sacks. I saw that. But I think he I think he actually posted on Twitter 15 for 51. I think that's what he said. Hope he's right. Great stuff is always good. Oh God, I would love it. Because I love it. These are Larry. I mean, dude, he in terms of being a pass rusher, the production is there. It's just can he stay on the field? Um, what he play like seven games last year? He had five sacks. He was, you know, so he could definitely get after the quarterback. I'm not gonna go as far to say 15. I hope that and Pivotal right. played one game together, I think. Yeah, I I think Aziz could be really good opposite Cave on Thibodeau with the defensive line we've got. So I hope he's right. I don't. I'm not going to go to your expect to that, but hey, anything's possible. He's certainly talented. V Rock says, "What you know? Think about." Yeah, they added. Uh, you see, I think his first initial is actually D. Jeter. They added a nose tackle. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I saw it today. I don't know much about the guy at all. I just know that everybody was saying his name is Jeter and his first initials D, <laughs> but I don't know much about him. I would guess he's probably not going to make the team because we've got, I mean, maybe he will because right now Ashawn Robinson's dinged up. I don't know how serious that injury is going to be going into the year, but you've got Nacho and Ashawn. You've also got Davidson, who we drafted last year in the fifth round, who's an interior guy. We drafted, I can't remember his name. Uh, the, the kid, I think he went to, I want to say he went to Oregon in like the sixth or seventh round of this year's draft. Somebody in the chat's going to say it. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Somebody's going to say it. Um, but it's a pretty deep group, so I don't think he'll make the team. Yeah, we know D. Jeter's not Derek Jeter. We know Jordan that. Riley, yeah, there it is. They drafted him. So I, I, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if he makes the team. But he's probably he's probably a fill-in temporarily until he, uh, Robinson gets back. That's my, my opinion on the matter, at least. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Shane Carter, what's going on, man? I des I desperately need revenge W's on Philly and Dallas. I think you're going to get one with Dallas. Philly's going to be tough. But, hey, I'm definitely not going into the year saying it's impossible. We play them late in the year. You don't know what that team and our team are going to look like by then. So True. it's a week-to-week -week league. Every year we go into the year. Last year, everybody's going into the year saying the Rams are Super Bowl contenders. They're one of the worst teams in football. Okay? Yep. You know, they, so – it's a week-to-week -week league. You don't know what the Eagles are going to look like by week 14, week 15, whenever we play them. So I'm not going into the year writing any game off as a loss. Let's see how the Giants look as the year progresses. Let's see how the Eagles look as the year progresses. Right. Who are um, the Lions beating the Packers? They knocked them out of the postseason the last game of the season. <clears throat> yeah. So you don't know. But I think we stand a very good chance to knock off Dallas at least once. David, what's going on? Serious question. Now that CBD is, is legal in every state and weed is legal in about half, can players be suspended for THC? <clears throat> I think they, I mean, uh, to my Absolutely. There, it has nothing to do with the legality of the yeah. substance, but there's a banned substance list. Alcohol is not illegal, but I don't, well, not that they drug tested for alcohol, but I'm pretty sure if you showed up drunk, uh, they wouldn't think too highly of that. But yeah, if they have a banned substance list, no matter what that is. Yeah. And that's probably on the banned substance list. So yeah, yeah I mean, I think they would have made a big deal about that if it was taken off. So yeah, yeah it's like my job. I mean, they. I was surprised. I have a government job. You have a. Government, I was surprised they didn't drug test me. I've been drug tested at every other job I've ever had, <laughs> working at like uh, you know, not you know, whatever it may be. Uh, cable. Ah, they're just happy to show up to work. They don't really care. Yeah, I, but I'm surprised they didn't. But um, but if they, <laughs> but if I did have a, pro a positive drug test for marijuana at my job I, even though it's illegal in the state of new york i'd probably get i don't know i'd probably get into so just because it's legal doesn't necessarily mean that you're right it's a ban it's a banned substancing like 
they have all kinds of banned substances and like supplements and you got to be careful with whatever it is um not that they're illegal but like i don't know i'm just tribulus is like it's test boosters are bullshit anyway i'm just telling people that they're a waste of money like people take test boosters things you're gonna get your doesn't boost your test out it might it may, may be a smidgen not even enough to notice but like a tribulus maybe that's in the band substance like who knows it's certainly not illegal you can get a gnc there's things that you can get a gnc but the ingredients they might have an ingredient that's on the band substance list and you get pissed that out and you're suspended by the way bad dog we gotta say, we've just been having so much fun talking to the chat, talking to each other. We had we had a, we carried seven hundred people here tonight. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. We bad though. We 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 got five weeks till the regular season. Giants fans are foaming at the mouth. We're ready. We're ready to go. A lot of hype this year. We got we, we got our first we got our first preseason game around the corner next week. We a, week I, from we today, joint, we got a joint practice. I think this week with the Lions. So. Exciting times at Giants land. I'm glad to see that the fan base is pumped up. Thank you guys for all the support you guys always show. You guys are awesome. Love you guys. Thank you guys. John says, who the blank said Jim Brown is over? Listen, Jim Brown is one of the top 10 players in the history of the National Football League. And another thing that people don't know about Jim Brown, bad dog, many people, in terms of being an overall athlete, he's he's right there with a guy like Bo Jackson. He's thought to be the greatest. I, I know it's like a random sport. He was thought to be the greatest lacrosse player in the history of, of lacrosse. <laughs> like, he could have done whatever he wanted, and he would have been the best at it. Like, he was yeah. an incredible athlete. Anybody that says that Jim Brown is is overrated doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know the history of the game. Like, I know that because lacrosse is a big thing on Long Island, where I grew up, and people always talked about that, how he was, like, the greatest lacrosse player of all time. But obviously, money was in the NFL. Yeah. Ginzo says, thank you very much, man. If it comes down to Ford, Wheaton, and John. Plus, he was in the running man. All right? Yeah. <laughs> He's in the running man. So, come on. Even Richard Dawson says, there he goes. The number one Russia fireball. <laughs> and Ginzo says, if it comes down to Ford, Wheaton, and Johnson at wide receiver, would you put Johnson over Wheaton? Because he likely gets claimed before getting to the practice squad. I don't think Ford Wheaton's making this team. Um, maybe the Giants do some finagling to ensure that he doesn't get claimed by somebody else because they did give him a decent amount of guaranteed money. But I'd be shocked if Ford Wheaton makes this team. The wide receiver core is too deep. Um, there's too much competition there. Uh, I, I think if he goes on claim, obviously we're going to stick him on the practice squad. But, yeah, Colin Johnson for sure, uh, I, I think, stands a much better chance to make this team than Ford Wheaton. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm getting close to 50-50 that Johnson may make the team. Uh, they clearly liked him last year. I think year. he was making it last year if he didn't get hurt. Yeah, so I think the only thing that could hold him back is, like we talked about earlier, he he probably is not going to be a guy that's looked upon as like a special teams contributor. So traditionally speaking, your last receiver on a team, you may want you know you, you may want that facet of his game to be able to contribute in the special teams area. But if you're asking me who's more likely to make the team, it's clearly Colin Johnson, in my opinion. Uh, Gigi says over under 25 passing touchdowns for Daniel Jones. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. I'm confident, DJ, this year. I'm going to yeah, go over. Yeah, listen, I said he was going to have more passing touchdowns than he had combined touchdowns last year at 22. So yeah, I'm going to go over. I think he's between 25 and 30. If I got to put a number on, I think he's there. And and obviously, I'm basing this, he's going to stay healthy. Like, don't come at me, Chris, and say, oh, you said 25 and he threw 14, right. but he played 11 games. Like, I'm basing this, he's going to stay healthy and play 17 games. I'm going over. I can see him having like 27 and seven, 27 touchdowns, seven picks. I could, I could see something like that. Yeah. I, I think he's going to have another five or six on the ground. I think he's going to have a very good year. KN says, sign Zeke. It might piss off the Calgary. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Um, that yeah, would be at, pretty funny. At this point, Zeke's, I mean, Zeke, he's washed. He's not what he was. You saw, you saw it the last couple of years. Well, he was with Dallas. He's still a guy that can help you on the goal line. He runs hard. I'm not saying he wouldn't bring any value to this. He doesn't get, one thing I'll give Ezekiel Elliott credit for is he does not. He pushes the puck. Negative runs, right? Yeah, you don't he he doesn't get tackled for losses. That'd be funny if we did sign, but we, we, we're not going to do that. If, if we're going to sign anything, it's going to be an edge or, you know, maybe, maybe a lineman Our our backup center got hurt. The guy we picked up from the Steelers. I think he's out. So, Maybe you pick up a lineman, uh, even though I think Bredesen probably projects to be the backup center at this point. But, um, yeah, we're not doing that, but it would be funny. Rico says DJ will get 29 passing touchdowns and six rushing touchdowns this year. Good see it. That's, that's reasonable. 
I mean, I think people just like the dude had 24 and 12 games rookie year. So for people to say that they can't see him throwing for close to 30, I mean, if they would have had a 17 game schedule, his rookie year he was on pace to throw for 34. So like, it's clearly obvious that the guy is capable of throwing 25 to 30 touchdowns. I, I, anybody that thinks that's outrageous, I think you're out of your mind. Of course he's capable of doing it. It's going to come down to how much do they open up this offense? What's the offensive strategy? But if the Giants do what I think they're going to do, they're going to open it up. They're going to take more shots down the field. With the red zone play calling of Mike Kafka, of course, I think Daniel Jones is going to throw over 25 touchdowns. Of course. Period. I think he's going to have a good year. I can't wait for it. Bill. Bill, man, thank you again, man. He says, my biggest worry is the O-line. All our new weapons are worthless if DJ has no time. I, I agree. That should be. that. Until such time we get a consistent line like the Eagles or the Cowboys, which hopefully happens by next year, hopefully. Um, hopefully we see a lot of growth this year and we say to ourselves, wow, we're like this close. Like we need that one more finishing touch. These guys need to mature a little bit more. Hopefully that's what I'm hoping we get out of this year. Like this becomes a near average offensive line. But until such time, you know, going into a year that you're it's a trending trending in the right direction it's an offense that's at least teetering on average that's always going to be the biggest question mark going into the year because at the end of the day the game starts in the trenches we saw it in the super bowl with the greatest quarterback in the history of the nfl at yep. least in terms of talent with pat mahomes okay what did they do the next year they went out there they added like three linemen but in that super bowl he couldn't do anything because they couldn't block yeah and they so drafted the creed humphrey the next year yeah, my so, guy. so listen at the end of the day that's where it all starts they don't get the they don't get the uh, credit that they deserve because they don't score touchdowns. It's not the most glamorous position, but yeah, if we if we can't hold our blocks, if this offensive line doesn't get better over last year, yeah, our offense isn't going to be as good as we're all hoping for going into the year. It's pretty obvious. Now, um, my argument with the running backs situation is: Would you rather give all that money to the running back, or would you rather give it to the guys in front of the running backs? I, that yeah. offensive line is very important, and well, we I, know that as Giants fans because when we were winning Super Bowls, our offensive lines were dominant. When we have sucked for years, our offensive line was terrible. Yeah. Terrible. And Big reason that, why Manning dropped off a cliff statistically after 2016 was because of that freaking offensive line. It was terrible. Yeah, and, and he goes on to say, and he's right. He says, we really only have one proven winner out of the – and you're right. Although he's one of the best in the sport. He's the only guy that's a known commodity uh, going into the year. We're all excited about JMS. He's a rookie. We'll see. He's an older rookie. He's 24. So maybe it won't be as big of a, a transition for him as a traditional rookie who's 21, 22. But you got to figure he's going to have to, he's going to have some growing pains. Neil is a question mark. I do think Neil, and I don't think this injury will be anything too serious. I do think Neil will have a jump this year, but you don't know that. You know, it's kind of like Andrew Thomas when he was going into year two. We all thought he was going to have the jump, but we didn't know it. So we got to see, we got to see the production. We got to see the increase. Uh, in, in the uh, production out of Evan Neal, I do think the line will be better because I think Neal will be better. Um, I think JMS, as the year goes along, will at least be on par, if not at least slightly better in his rookie year than Jalapio was last year because Jalapio just wasn't very good. Yes. Um, and I think the play calling it, with the better weapons that we have on the team is going to be able to mask at least some of the deficiencies of the offensive line. When you have a good play caller, you could generate – you know, separation rel quicker, let's put it that way, than like Jason Garrett could. So I think they'll be able to mask at least some of the deficiencies of the offensive line. And I think Jones year two in the offensive scheme is going to help the line too, just because he's more decisive, right? It's so I, I think there's reason to think that the line's going to be better this year. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. But the question is how much better? Because it's got to be significantly better if we want this offense to get to where we're all hoping it'll get this year. That's by far. That's why I keep saying it, Bad. We're all saying it. The key to this team, this offense, is Evan Neal. Yeah, it's a big, it's big. It's I look at I look at Daniel Jones as a given. I know a lot of people may call me crazy when I say that. They may say only threw 15 touchdowns. How could you call him a given? I know what I'm getting out of Jones. I'm gonna get at least a pretty good to good quarterback at a bare minimum, in my opinion. I don't know what I'm getting out of Evan Neal. I don't know what I'm getting out of this offensive line. If Evan Neal does his job and becomes an average to slightly above average right tackle, that's going to enhance not just Jones, but this entire offense. That's the key for me. That's the X factor. If Evan Neal could take that jump, this offense has potential, not even potential. They're going to be a top 10 offense if they stay healthy and Evan Neal takes that jump. That's my opinion going into the year. That is the X factor for this football team. That's yep. the key. That's the key. Yep. 
Um, who's uh, did, who's jalapeno? Who said jalapeno? Did I say I? Uh, <laughs> did, who's who's jalapeno? Did I say jalapeno? <laughs> he was an older uh, center. Oh, I oh yeah. Oh, I must have said jalapeno because I was thinking of the older Giants. Uh, uh, no, I was thinking of what's his name? The guy that we uh. Lewinsky. But what, what? No, Red, not Kowinski, The center. Uh, no, no, he's not on the Giants anymore. The center that went to the 49ers. Um, what the hell's his name? The guy that got the 15 yard penalty last year that co nearly cost us the game. Feliciano? Feliciano. I thought I said Feliciano. I must have said Jalapio. <laughs> They're both centers. They both stink. So uh, they both in the no. Yeah. So excuse me for getting them confused. They're both garbage. <laughs> Feliciano. Uh, Ginzo says Neil won't have as big of a jump as Thomas in year two, but we'll be better. I mean, that's asking a lot. Um, that That's asking a lot. Um, Andrew Thomas went from a struggling rookie. Well, I think we all saw Thomas was getting better throughout the course of his rookie season. He really struggled in the first eight games, and then he got better. And we and we found out after the year that he was dealing with a foot injury all year. And Evan Neal was battling that injury. He was, too. All I mean, last and, year. He, and he was playing on the other side of the line, right? Yep. He was playing on the left side his last couple of years in college. So there was a transition there, too. So... Uh, I agree, though. I, I'm not going to go into the year expecting as big of a jump that Andrew Thomas had year one to year two, but I'm expecting a pretty big jump. I, I'm i expecting Neil to be an average, at, at least borderline average right tackle in football this year. I don't think that's crazy to think that he could do that. Um, you know, tackle, corner, and uh, quarterback, historically speaking, are the hardest positions to transition to in the NFL. So year two, I expect a pretty big jump for Evan Neal. Um, that's, I do. He looks He looks thinner. Uh, he, when you watch the clips, he looks more confident in terms of getting into his stance, holding his blocks. I, I, I expect him to be at least a decent tackle this year. And if he's even decent, I think this offense is going to be pretty good. Um, but guys, we've gone on, we've gone a little over time tonight. Went two hours, 12 minutes started at uh, nine o'clock. Appreciate all you guys. We'll be live on Bad Dogs either next Thursday, Friday, whatever the schedule. Probably Thursday be. and Friday because we'll oh. do a show, and then Friday is the game. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So we'll go. Maybe we'll go live on Wednesday. Oh well, no, it would probably be more exciting to do the night before. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go. All right, so we'll be live. I guess we'll go live the first game on my channel, second so preseason, whatever it may be. So we're gonna be live on Bad Dogs on Thursday, and we'll be back here Friday. <laughs> so I'm excited, Bad Dog. I'm excited. First preseason game. Um, I'm curious to see, and we didn't talk about this throughout the stream. We talked about it a little bit before we went live. I'm curious to see how much time and reps the starters get for the New York Giants. You know, how, does Daniel Jones get a few drives? Do you want him to get a little chemistry with Waller? Do you want him to get a little chemistry with Hyatt and Campbell in game situations? Or do you just let Tyra Taylor start the game? Last I, I think they'll get one drive. That's you think they get one drive, and then I think in the next one they play a quarter. Yeah, maybe a quarter in the first drive in the second quarter, and then they don't play the third one. I yeah, I, I obviously we all just hope they stay healthy. Um, but I agree. I don't think they're going to give him any extensive time. Uh, in the in the, I think they have confidence in DJ going into the year, so they want to make sure he stays healthy. Um, but we'll see. E either way, you're still excited to see the back end guys. You're excited to see the rookies. Hyatt, I'm sure, is going to get some exposure. Uh, we'll all have our eyes on some of the rookies that have been standing out of yeah, camp. Absolutely. So, uh, so I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, it's going to be a fun year. But I, I appreciate all you guys. You guys are incredible. Um, thank you guys for blowing up the stream. We had over 700 people in here at one point tonight. So can't say thank you enough. We'll be live on Bad Dogs on Thursday. Um, and Bad Dog, man, uh, yeah, do, do say what you got to say. Yeah, you guys are great, and um, th this is definitely just it, – it's fun to go into a season optimistic. We haven't had a reason to be optimistic about a giant season in a long time. Uh, but last year, they definitely overachieved. I, I know some people did predict them to be a good team. I certainly didn't. I, I know a lot of people just didn't really know what to expect, but you know, going from four wins to nine uh, is, is a big jump, especially when you look at what we had out there and all the changes that were made in the off season um, is an incredible job. And it feels like we have the right pieces in place. You love the front office. You love the coaching staff. You love the confidence in these guys. And um, I'm excited. So yeah, man, you guys and girls are the best. That's, that's why I say that all the time. I always said it for years, Chris and I, but this will be our sixth year doing this show. And I said, just wait till we're good. Well, guess what? Don't look now. Took a while, but we're good. We're coming. We're coming. So, 
Yes. We got some stability. We got a head coach. And I, I just want to give uh, Bill Hart a quick shout out. He always uh, talks to me on Twitter. He made the correct meme for me that occasionally I drop on Twitter. Uh, Bill, man, thank you for being such a great supporter, man. I appreciate you for being here. Uh, Perry, have a good night. Amazing guy, have a good night. Bill, uh, have a good night. Irish Rover, Russell Reed, Ginzo, thank you so much for being here. ROB, lacrosse is used in Syracuse. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's where... That's, that's where, where Brown went to college, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's used on Long Island, too. So I remember I remember that story growing up as a kid, man. Um, you know, everybody talked about how he could have been the greatest lacrosse. Like, he could have been the best at whatever he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the Don, I think that's your brother-in-law. Have a good yeah. night, man. Uh, King Trizzy, have a good night. Thank you to everybody. Davey, Afghan, Afghan, how can we not shout out Afghanistan? Day oneer with this show. Day oneer with this show. Yeah. Um, thank you for being here, Otis the Cow. Thank you to everybody for being here. You guys are the best. Bad dog, close it out. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time for the Entertain Talk of Sports. It is the bad thing it is. We're going to have a good night. We have a good year. We gone. Peace.